triple standards. Dennis Erickson has met his, losing just three games in four years as head coach. There's a tremendous standard for quarterbacks to meet as well, and Gino Toretta is now being mentioned for higher honors after breaking some outstanding, long-standing Miami passing records, one set by Vinny Testaverde and the other by Craig Erickson. Toretta is undefeated since taking over as Miami's quarterback last year, and the Hurricanes are number one for the second straight year. But they can thank that in large part to an inspired defense that helped pull off college football's unparalleled daily double, beating Florida State and Penn State in successive weeks. This fourth down play by Michael Barrow against the Nittany Lions may be one of college football's best. So Frank Beaver knows exactly what awaits his Virginia Tech Hokies on this Saturday. One half of his senior running tandem, Vaughn Hebron, may not play today. So the other half, Tony Kennedy, will need to pick it up and help fuel the Virginia Tech running game that leads their offense. And the Hokie defense will have to rise up and play its game of the year as they get their one shot at number one. The Miami Hurricanes are coming to Blacksburg as the number one team in the nation for a Big East Conference battle coming up next. Saturday afternoon in the hills of southwestern Virginia and a sellout crowd better than 50,000 on hand as the number one ranked Miami Hurricanes come to Blacksburg for the first time as a member of the Big East Football Conference that meet the Virginia Tech Hokies. And welcome everybody to our Big East Football Conference Game of the Week with Todd Blackledge, Ted Robinson. I think it's been well documented what Miami has had to overcome to get to this point in the year 6-0 and in number one. Hurricane, homes destroyed, lives altered. An incredible schedule, daily double win over Florida State and Penn State that's remarkable. But one number really stands out to me, Todd, is 54 straight wins for Miami against unranked teams. They've been able to beat the good teams, but they have not slipped at all against the teams they should be. Winningest team in college football over the last 10 years, and if there's any mark to their character, it's been that they have been able to thrive on adversity. If there's any team in America that knows how to circle the wagons and take care of their own, it's the Miami Hurricanes. Another great job overcoming major options obstacles this year. Well, if we look at this year's Miami offensive team, you have to start at quarterback. Gino Toretta has arrived. His name is etched right there with all the greats in Miami's wonderful quarterbacking tradition. The only loss as a starter was as a freshman when he subbed for the injured Craig Erickson. He's a legitimate Heisman candidate, and that number right there is the most significant. If you ask me or if you ask Dennis Erickson, he is a proven winner every time that he goes out there. Two other things really stand out to me about Gino Toretta. Number one, his touch that he has throwing the deep pass. He's going to take about nine shots a game at defense. The other thing is his toughness. This year, particularly, with some of the offensive line problems, he has gotten hit a lot more. He's a tough guy. He hangs in the pocket and waits to the last minute to deliver the football. And very few mistakes. Less than one interception per game. Let's show you some other numbers, though. And Todd, tell us what these mean. Miami's offensive output has shrunk over the last couple of years. Well, you see their running game is down. That's the, the most glaring number there. And th what that tells us is that they have struggled a little bit on the offensive line. They lost three guys to graduation, led by All-American Leon Searcy. They lost a couple guys before the season started to injuries that were projected as starters. Then they get one guy back, Mario Cristobal, and Rudy Barber, the other starter, he goes out for the rest of the year. So they've had kind of a makeshift patchwork offensive line. Last week was the best they played up front, according to Erickson. Well, there's nothing patchwork about the Miami defense. I guess when historians get through with writing about this era of college football, they're going to talk about Miami and how they revolutionized defense with speed. Every team in the country now is patterning their recruiting after Miami, getting speed guys on defense, and it's led by these three linebackers. They all run a 4-5-40 or better. They fly around and make plays, and they get up to play for the big games. In their three toughest games this year against Arizona, Florida State, and Penn State, these three guys combined for 111 tackles. Well, Virginia Tech's had a disappointing year. They've lost two games in the last minute. They've had another game tied in the last minute. They have a chance to make a season today with a win, but they get a, a shot at Miami without their top quarterback. Well, they're a little bit undermanned. Maurice DeShazo was the starting quarterback. He got a hit pointer last week against North Carolina State. He's available to play, but he's still got some soreness trying to turn his hips. They're also 
you know, because of his injury, they're going to go to Craig Cole. This will be his first start. Now, here's a guy who's worked very hard for two years. He finally has an opportunity to stand in the limelight. He will have a lot on his shoulders today against this Hurricane defense. Another key possible loss for the Tech offense, Von Hebron, the other tailback. He did not practice for two weeks, didn't play last week. He has a sprained knee, but he told me on the practice field Thursday that, Todd, I will play in this ball game. Well, I think if anybody is going to have to play for Virginia Tech to have a chance to pull the upset off today, it's going to have to be their defense. The defense got to play the games of their lives. They're going to have to really rise to the top, and the two guys that will spearhead that defense are two second cousins, the Preston uh, cousins. P.J. and Jerome, they're both from Martinsville, Virginia. They're tied with tackles, tied the team lead in sacks with four each, and these are two guys that are impact players for this Hokie defense. They have to have a whale of a ball game today. And Virginia Tech has had trouble in pass games this year stopping the pass. Well, that, this defense, the wide tackle six, kind of an eight-man front, it's susceptible to the pass. And you look at that number on the bottom right-hand corner, East Carolina threw for a record 426, the most yards ever given up by a Tech defense. They'll have a similar task ahead with this Hurricane offense. All right, well, I think you can hear behind us, they're ready here. Over 18,000 tickets alone for today's game sold to students, and Virginia Tech is ready. They get their crack at number one today. We'll have our Big East Conference matchup. Kickoff coming up after these words from our local stations. In Blacksburg, Virginia, 51,000 the capacity, and it will be filled today. And uh, for Virginia Tech, it's a nice sight because they'll be filled with all fans rooting for them. They oftentimes uh, get split crowds here for games with Virginia and West Virginia there arch rivals you can see we have been blessed with another glorious saturday we're on a great streak of weather for our saturday afternoon telecasts and frank beamers virginia tech hokies a little disappointed last week they were tied here by north carolina state when the wolf pack kicked the field goal in the game's final play while miami was having a pretty easy time at home last week beating in tcu the key for Miami today in this ball game, first of all, they've got to maintain their intensity and focus. They've already come through the toughest part of their schedule, per se. They've got to stay at that same level of intensity today. Secondly, force the pass. Shut down the Tech running game. If they can put Cole in a, in a pass-only situation, they will have the upper hand. And they have to have solid kick coverage. Tech possesses two fine returners in Kennedy and Campbell. For Virginia Tech, sack prevention. Now that falls on two people's shoulders. The offensive line, they've got to do a great job, and the quarterback. He has to make quick decisions, throw the ball away, do anything to prevent sacks. They have to deny the easy long touchdown. That's what Miami really gets ahead of you with. Long touchdown passes from Toretta to that stable of receive receivers. And thirdly, they need to create an edge with the special teams. If they match up anywhere on the field with this team, it is in the special team. They need a block. They need a big return. They need some kind of a turnover or a big momentum-changing play from their special teams. Last time these teams met, 1987, Miami with the win. We're set to go. Dane Pruitt will kick off for Miami. Tony Kennedy, Ray Crittenden, deep for Virginia Tech. Miami won the toss and deferred their choice until the second half. This will be Kennedy about two yards deep, and he'll down it to give Virginia Tech the ball starting at their 20-yard line. And starting for Virginia Tech, his first collegiate start is a junior from Lockport, New York, upstate New York, Traga Cole. Offensive line is a big question for Virginia Tech, except in the middle where Jim Pine, a junior center, as fine an offensive lineman, they say, as anybody's coached here at Virginia Tech. The big play receiver, Antonio Freeman, has had four touchdown catches of better than 50 yards this year. And right away, the Hokies come out for the first play in the eye. Mark Poindexter in front of Tony Kennedy. And Kennedy gets the pitch going left, and he's got nothing but white shirts around him. And the Hurricane linebacking trio led by 45, Darren Smith, is there to bring Kennedy down for a loss. Kevin Patrick, the right defensive end, has stepped in for Rusty Medeiros, and he leads the team with six sacks. In the secondary, Ryan McNeil was a questionable starter today. And he's a guy the pro scouts who've been here this week all love. It's a surefire first-round pick, but he's out there starting for Miami. A loss of one for Kennedy, second and 11. Miami is showing blitz right now on this second down and long situation. You can see Craig Cole is going to a checkoff play. Tech has three receivers right. Blitz on the backside. Smith hits. 
Cole as he throws the ball. It is ruled a pass and incomplete as Steve Sanders made a dive for it in the flat. But Trey Cole just got baptized to Miami's defense. Well, Trey Cole, he read the blitz. However, he's got a note on his backside. Darren Smith is too fast to hold on to that football. He knows he's coming. But he has got to get rid of that football. Look, he just holds it a little too long, and Darren Smith comes in and is able to disrupt the throw. It's a good thing that that ball fell harmlessly incomplete. And now it puts Tech into a third down and 11. Again, three receivers right for the wide side of the field. Bo Campbell in the slot. Big rush again. Cole sprints out and hits Freeman. Freeman spins, but he's out of bounds. He was trying to get to the first down marker at the 30, but he had stepped out just shy of the 25. Dexter Siegler on the coverage for Miami. And uh, that will be a completion, but will leave Tech short and bring up fourth down. A nice little change up, though, by the offense for Virginia Tech. They want to give Trey Cole an opportunity to be successful. They don't want to just put him right back in a straight drop back because up front they don't like their matchups. That time you saw they lined up in the blitz again, Miami, but this time they audible to a little of a, a half roll sprint out, got him to the corner to make the throw. Robbie Colley gets the punt away, and Kevin Williams, dangerous return man, takes the fair catch, but Miami has outstanding field position to start after a short punt by Colley. 46-yard line for the Hurricanes as they start on their first possession. 13.56 to play. First quarter in Blacksburg. Miami gets the ball for the first time with no score. Today's Big East football telecast is brought to you in part by Coors Extra Gold. Slow brewed for real beer flavor. No doubt about it, beer is back. And by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? That's right. Only Ford Truck offers driver airbags in both mini and full-size vans. But there's a lot more to safety than that. That's why Ford not only designs and builds trucks to meet or exceed federal crash test requirements, we also do special safety testing of our own. We do what the government says and a lot more. The best-built, best-selling American trucks are built Ford Tough. It's a refreshing taste from a cold, cold place. Yeah, it's easy going down from the very first round. Ah, pure as can be, it's a natural, you see. Oh. It's smooth, smooth, silver bullet smooth. <laughs> yeah, well, that's our story. Now it's your call. Cold Coors Light is the right beer now. That's all. Bye-bye. Miami will start for the first time from their 46 for the first down. Gino Toretta, senior from Pinole, California, last week against TCU broke the school career passing and total offense records, and he goes to work right away from a shotgun. Three receivers, Donnell Bennett is the setback. And right away, Toretta's going to run. He's got a lot of room. And he'll get a first down as he's chased out of bounds by Melendez Bird. Not what you expect to see from Toretta, but alert enough to take advantage and run for the first down. Just four interceptions. Big number for Miami. The offensive line that has been shuffled. In fact, Carlos Etheridge was a tight end until this year. Mario Cristobal is the one returning as starter. And Daryl Spencer gets a start today instead of Kevin Williams as the tailback. Danelle Bennett, the lone setback, first down at the 43 of Virginia Tech. Quick pass, Williams open up the middle. And in two plays from scrimmage, Miami is to the 13 of Virginia Tech. What Miami does offensively, they put the three wide receivers, they spread your defense, then they let a little squirt guy like Kevin Williams with great explosion and burst work in the middle of the field against linebackers. You can see one defensive back and two linebackers, 44 and 40. Those are inside linebackers. They cannot match up with Kevin Williams. Give him a lot of room in the middle of the field. Give him an option route into Retta Retta. Well, it's first down at the 13. Again, Bennett in the one-back set. This time, Donnell Bennett gets the football, and he is brought down. 
still able to gain some yardage. They'll push it down to about the 10 for the Tech defense. Stop it. Virginia Tech playing up. Primarily, they play eight men up near that line. The four-man front and four linebackers. Their two outside linebackers also can double up. They're almost like strong safety. And Kirk Alexander is their center fielder. And he's going to have a lot of responsibilities stopping the deep balls today in the secondary. Now it's second down and seven. Ball is just inside the 10. Here's an interesting formation. And uh, the officials didn't like it very much. What kind of a look was that, huh? I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> Gino Toretta was going to an audible. We'll wait and see what they call down here. Dead ball foul. Delay of game. On the offense. Still second down. I think the Virginia Tech defense confused Toretta that time. Defensive coordinator Michael Clark told me yesterday, we are going to play more zone defense inside the 10-yard line. Our tendency to this point has been line up and blitz and play man-to-man. -man. And Miami was anticipating man-to-man. -man. They came up to the line and saw a zone look. Toretta took too much time making the change. So now it's second and 12. Ball back to the 15. And it's a draw. Look at Bennett go. And he is down inside the two. It'll be first and goal for Miami. Sophomore from Fort Lauderdale, who started the year third team and is now the leading rusher for the Kings. Well, the offensive line played better last week against TCU. They've got four running backs that they put in the game. This is Donnell Bennett. He is the leading rusher this year for the Hurricanes and a nice job stretching that defense out, running a little draw up there, letting him find a crease and take it north and south. First and goal just inside the three-yard line where the ball is marked. Jason Marucci, a pullback, is in. Bennett is the tailback. And Bennett hurdles and does not make it. He got up and spun over the top of that pile, but it stopped at about the one-yard line. No question when they want to power the ball, they're running right. Well, they're running right behind Kip Vickers, the guard, and Mario Cristobal. Those are two redshirt seniors over there. Cristobal missed the first three games, rehabilitating from a knee injury, but he came back against Florida State, and he is probably the, the heart and soul inspirational leader of this, defense, of this offensive line. Right away, we have a, J a player down, J.C. Price for Virginia Tech, shaking up uh, on that play, a sophomore. Academically, first year playing, and uh, a man that just moved into the starting lineup a couple of weeks ago for Tech. Dennis Erickson. You can imagine this, coach and college football team, he has gone two years and four days without losing a game. The last game Miami lost was October 20th, 1990 at Notre Dame. I'll tell you, this matchup today is a good news, bad news for Frank Beamer. He says, well, I'm glad we're not playing him in the Orange Bowl. Nobody can beat him down there. But look at that bottom graphic. 38 of the last 42 on the road Miami has won. They have just dominated uh, college football in the last eight to ten years. And they're closing in here and getting the first strike in this game. Second down and goal, and it goes again to Bennett, who is in for the touchdown. Third of the year for Donnell Bennett. And so the Canes take their uh, first possession, go 54 yards for a score. They ran right over the left side over guard Diego London. He made his first start last week in the ball game against TCU, filling in for Rudy Barber. He's 296 pounds, and he gets a great push on Jerome Preston back into the end zone, and an easy touchdown for Miami. Dane Pruitt, first year as the place kicker for the game, boots the point through. And Miami has taken a 7-0 lead here on Virginia Tech. A quick strike on their first possession. They go 54 yards to score. 7-0 Miami over Virginia Tech. And we'll be back with Big East Conference football after these words from our local stations. I'm a smoker, but in my office, it doesn't work. No problem. 
I chew Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. That cool, clean taste fits any agenda. When I can't smoke, I enjoy pure chewing satisfaction. <laughs> I smoke, but with my kids in the car, smoking's curbed. No big deal. I've got Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. That cool, clean taste is a family favorite. When I can't smoke, I enjoy pure chewing satisfaction. Since 1959, Holiday House Buffet restaurants have been a Florida tradition for good food and great value. Our food is prepared and cooked throughout the day to ensure its quality and freshness. Holiday House meats are carved right onto your plate like our specially roasted lamb, beef, and turkey. And help yourself to unlimited salads, hot vegetables, and hot bread loaf. Plus, all of our spectacular desserts are baked daily. Holiday House is open every day for lunch and dinner with 13 locations throughout Florida. Holiday House Buffet restaurants, closest to home cooking. We guarantee it. Virginia Tech sideline. Now the Hokies get themselves in a position they can't afford to really be in. You know, you look at Miami's team, and to me, another number that just jumps out at you, they've won 24 straight games. The last 13 games Miami's played, they've held their opponents to under 20 points. Only twice in the 24 in a row has a team scored 20 or more on them. So you just can't afford to get too far behind them because you know you're not going to score a lot of points on this team. Only five touchdowns by oppose, opposing offenses against them this year. I mean, they just play great team defense, and that speed is what gives them their edge. This kickoff short, Tony Kennedy at the 7. And Kennedy is down as he crosses the 20. Virginia Tech would they, they don't have an explosive offense they know that they, they're gonna have to stop Miami from the, the quick drives is the one they just put together needing just six plays to go any figure of Virginia Tech and you made a point about a key today for them they got to make some good things happen in this kicking game yeah and right there the first punt opportunity Robbie Colley gets off a bad punt gives Miami too good a field position if you're gonna slow them down you got to make them go a long way you can't give them a 50-yard line advantage Three wideouts here for Tech. And Miami comes in hard. The ball handed to Kennedy, and he does get some yardage to the 25. Well, Virginia Tech hoping they can capitalize on that aggressiveness of the Miami defense. Kennedy gets five on the first play. Syracuse playing at Temple today. Big East Conference battle that's going on current with this ball game. Pittsburgh home later today to host East Carolina. Later today, West Virginia hosting Penn State. And tonight, Boston College at Tulane. Rutgers is the biggest school that is idle this week. Second and five for Virginia Tech from their 25. Kennedy again, great penetration. That play was completely broken up by Kevin Patrick, who was in the backfield as Kennedy was handed the ball. And that's the key to the Miami defense. They are a force the line of scrimmage team uh, when they play defense, they like to change the line of scrimmage on you, and Virginia Tech likes to run a lot of slower developing plays where they pull a guard or pull a tackle. Those plays have not been effective against this Miami defense. The best way to attack them is the way they did on first down, a quick hitter right at them, get them flying up the field and shoot past them. So now it's third and four. Let's see how Tech plays it. They did not make a third down conversion in the entire game last Saturday against NC State. And Paul misfires badly. Throwing that into the sidelines. Running out there was uh, Tony Kennedy out of the backfield being covered by Jesse Armstead. And the Tech now is 0 for 2 today on third downs. They tried to fool the Miami defense a little bit. They put all three wide receivers to the right side of their formation. Ran the, the halfback out of the backfield along the left sideline. But Jesse Armstead shows why he uh, is a great cover linebacker. Oh, they partially blocked the punt. They almost got the first one. And that one was partially blocked by Paul White. It does go forward, but Miami is still going to get great field position just shy of midfield. That was Paul White out of the Miami secondary, or defensive back, who comes across here and gets a piece of this punt. Didn't take too much time, but just a great layout effort right there by Paul White. Very quick off the corner, got in there, laid his body out, sacrificed his body, and came up with a big block. Well, Miami, they, their eyes get big at opportunities like this. They hit the lead, and now they get the ball back at their own 49. And really pushing Virginia Tech up from a wall here in the first quarter. Out of the shotgun. 
And Toretta has a man wide open, Larry Jones, out of the backfield. And he has a first down inside the 40. Rusty Pendleton inside backer on the hit for Virginia Tech. Another man, Larry Jones, who kind of came out of nowhere to be the MVP in the Orange Bowl last year. One weakness on this defense is in the flat area. All the defenders turn and run with receivers, and then they, they slip the back out late. By that time, everyone is occupied in coverage. And Jones has a nice lane there running to the sideline. From the 39, Toretta play fake, and he's got a man open, Coleman Bell, the tight end. And just like that, two more quick hits, and Miami is inside the 10. Oh, they make it look so easy. They have so many weapons. You know, Rich Olson, the offensive coordinator, said, I've never been anywhere where we have five guys, four wide receivers and a tight end, plus a quarterback who are as skilled as the guys we have. Coleman Bell is having a great year. Ever since he took over the starting job last the last four games of 1991, he has been on a real tear. He comes into this game, that's his 22nd reception of the year. First and goal, and Larry Jones broke a hit in the backfield. They had a shot at him. They do finally push him back. It was uh, Don Davis off the defensive front. Had a shot to get Jones in the backfield for a loss. And uh, usually what good teams do, they turn loss plays into game plays. That's what Larry Jones did. Well, Virginia Tech has to be able to come up and secure these tackles right there. He slips through one. Just good strength by Larry Jones. Now they still stop him for a short gain. But if Virginia Tech wants to keep them out of the end zone, they've got to make that play create a loss of yardage situation. Second and goal. 8 and 20 to go in the first quarter. Miami already up 7 0. They go to the shotgun here. Inside the 10. And Tech jumped. V Tech was going to come at Toretta there. You made a point yesterday about how a defense works out of the shotgun. Now it looks like this might have been against Miami. Well, the reason they blew it dead was because obviously one of the linemen flinched there on the line when he saw the pressure coming. Dead ball foul. Illegal snap on the offense. Still second down. Well, it does back him up five. The center, Terrell Green, was late on the snap. You're going to see Cristobal moves, the tight end moves, and the snap is a little bit late coming back. They read the blitz coming. He was just getting into pass protection position on the outside. A second and goal at the 12. Oh, and Toretta went down. His knee went down, and the play is dead at the 19. Miami has not used the shotgun all year. They went to it last week against TCU. They thought it would help them in their pass protection, and it did last week, but there's still some getting used to it. You really have to focus on catching the ball first. That's the first thing Gino has to do, and I've been there before. I've had that thing ricochet right? off my face mask before. I didn't you, know that. You've got to secure the ball first and then get your eyes back downfield, but the first and most important thing is catch the football. Well, now it is third and goal in the between Tech crowd. Getting up, trying to rally the defense. Third and goal at the 19. Loretta guns it, caught by Kevin Williams, but he's trapped. Now he's going to try to work his way across the field. Oh, watch out. He may get in. He is out just shy of the goal line and in shy, but there is a flag down way behind the play. Williams made an unbelievable effort to get out of trouble there and almost get in, but a flag is down well back at the 17-yard line for a bad block. Well, if anybody was wondering whether Kevin Williams was 100% healthy, that was the answer. He's been bothered by an ankle injury, but you can see right there, shifting and cutting all the way back across the field, he is 100% healthy. Zone defense, Toretta is just going to get something underneath and let Williams try to make a couple people miss. He eludes one right there, then he makes the decision to go all the way back across the field. Now you're susceptible to bad blocks there, and they're going to call Lamar Thomas with an illegal block in the back, but a great individual effort by Kevin Thomas trying to get it to the end zone. Illegal block in the back, above the way, against the offense, replay third down. Well, that was simply... A remarkable play when you just throw the ball out there to Kevin Williams. They see if you can get in. <laughs> he did. It's going to come back with a third 
penalty already for Miami. Miami beat TCU last week, beat them handily, and they still committed 16 penalties last week. 145 yards and still won the game handily. Now they're at the 27-yard line for the third and goal. Three-man rush this time. A little different defensive look for Virginia Tech. Serena throws it up, and that'll be over everybody and out of bounds. So the uh, Tech defense, well, something to feel good about here is they were facing first and goal and with the help of some penalties. They stopped Miami, and this will force a field goal try. First miss by Toretta today, three out of four, 72 yards. And Dane Pruitt will come out and try and kick the longest one of his career. This is a 44-yarder. Tech good at blocking kicks, no pressure there, and that one is good. Dane Pruitt, redshirt freshman from Birmingham, kicks the longest field goal of his Miami career, a 44-yarder, and so the Canes do come out with some points. And Miami now leads 10-0, 6.51 to go in the first. A real sports group is more than fancy technology. It's the perfect balance between the needs of a driver and the needs of a curve. With a pure, focused performance that makes even the same old road seem new. Because it's not the road you take, it's how you take the road. The all-new 24-valve Ford Pro GT. Have you driven a Ford lately? Yeah, how far away do you think I can get? in 72 hours. I wouldn't trust my car past the city limits. For the way you travel today more than ever, the smart money is on budget. Reward yourself with free rentals and upgrades. Ask about the new Budget Awards Plus Frequent Renter Program. The smart money is on budget. Now the Miami offense is struck, although uh, one thing that we have to concern Virginia Tech right now, Todd, they haven't really had to make Miami work for much. Miami's plays, receivers have been so open, it's been very easy for Toretta. Well, they've been wide open. They're stretching that defense very effectively with their formation. They're giving a lot of room to the tight end and the slot receiver, Kevin Williams, in there to work against linebackers, and they're going to have to shore that middle of the field up more than anything. Tony Kennedy, Ray Crittenden, the deep backs again. Dane Pruitt after a 44-yard field goal. Now, it's a line drive kick to the near side, and Tech will let that go out of bounds. That'll help them. They'll get it at the 35-yard line. It'll be for T Tech's option, and I would assume they'll take it at the 35 and take the good field position. A little deceiving there. The penalties backing up Miami. They actually gained many more yards than just the 24. Lost some with penalties. Well, we talked with Frank Beamer, the sixth year Virginia Tech coach, about starting Trey Cole for the first time against number one Miami. Well, Frank, trust us, he did answer the question. And as you might understand, it's a tough way to start, but they like Trey Cole's arm strength. Better pure thrower than Maurice DeShazo. That one out there, caught by Sanders, McNeil slips. And the ball is loose on the turf. And in the dive, who's got it? Miami has the football. Boy, what a tough break. Steve Sanders caught it. Tech had its first big play of the game made, and Sanders just dropped the football. No, he sure did. He made a great effort to gain some extra yardage. Good pass protection by Virginia Tech and a nice strong throw to the sideline by Cole. And watch Sanders. He has McNeil slip and he's just fighting for extra yardage and the ball just flies out. I think I think McNeil from the ground got an arm up there and got in on the football, but just a tough break for the Virginia Tech offense. They had a nice play on first down. They've got to secure the football. And again, Miami starts inside the 50 yard line. Isn't it amazing what can happen to you when you play Miami? Now, Virginia Tech had gone back-to-back -back games without a turnover. Come out here in the first quarter and commit one that could cost them. Toretta pushed out of the pocket and misfires there, trying to hit freshman running back Danielle Ferguson. Well, that's a 
a goal of Mike Clark, the defensive coordinator for Virginia Tech. You know, you're not going to sack to right, but you've got to pressure him and pester him a little bit. They studied the film, most particularly the Arizona game. Uh, when Arizona put a lot of pressure on them, they brought five and six people almost every down, and that's what Virginia Tech wants to do today. Normally, when Virginia Tech blitzes, they blitz seven and play with no free safety, but against this team, they only want to come with five or six. They want to keep Kirk Alexander, the free safety, in the middle of the field. Now the Toretta goes to the gun, second and ten. Sends everybody out. Toretta hits Ferguson again. And a good closeout there in the open field. Ken Brown, outside backer for Virginia Tech, made an outstanding play to bring down Ferguson after a gain of just two yards. And it'll be third down and eight coming up. But we had a chance to talk with Dennis Erickson yesterday and ask him to summarize the accomplishments of Gino Toretta the last two years. 18 and 0. I mean, you can't say much more than that. He's won one national championship. He's won 18 straight games as a starter. He's tough. He does what he has to to win. He's not selfish. Uh, I can't say enough about the type of guy he is. Hadn't thrown a ball yet to either of his big receivers, Copeland or Thomas. Let's see what happens here on third down. Out of the gun. That's going to Thomas. Through his hands. Incomplete. And a little exclamation point put on there with a big hit by Stacy Henley on Thomas. Two good things on that play for the Tech defense. All three pass plays in that drive, they got good pressure, just enough to kind of throw off the timing of Toretta. Look, Jerome Preston came around on a stunt, forced Toretta to move a little bit, and then they've got to do this. They've got, when they can get a fair shot on these wide receivers, they have to hit them hard just to kind of shake them up a little bit, take their confidence away. That's a much needed stand there by the defense. Here's Paul Snyder putting. Bo Campbell deep and let it go. And it hits sideways, and it is down. Yes, down at the one-yard line by Darren Smith. Man, I'll tell you, when things start going right, Paul Snyder hit a punt, and the ball hits inside the five and goes sideways. And Virginia Tech will be backed up to the one when we come back. the advanced training and equipment to take care of the advanced technology on your GM vehicle? You know who. Mr. Goodwrench. The smart choice for your smart car. It's showtime. Showtime. Hey! Whoa! I'll drive your partner with this half-hour instructional video. Free with a one-year subscription to Golf Digest, just $19.77. Call 800-648-3900. Imagine, the video and Golf Digest. Call 800-648-3900. It's a very sophisticated system. You're probably better off taking it to the GM dealership. We haven't got that kind of equipment here. Best bet's the dealership. Pretty tricky stuff. Out of our league. Sorry. Try the dealership. The dealership. The GM dealership. Well, Darren Smith, part of the fastest set of linebackers you'll ever see in college football, get down the field to down this punt. Well, not only is he a senior starting linebacker, but he's playing on the special teams. Look at him, know where the end zone is and just kind of zero in on that football and right at the last minute. I mean, that ball was so close. And that punt by Paul Snyder, very reminiscent of the one that he had against Florida State that really turned that ball game around, bouncing right back around the end zone. A great feeling for Paul Snyder at a rough first year in Miami. Bounce back to punting much better now as a senior. Tech backed up here. Cole going to try to throw, and he airmails one out of bounds. He threw now, that now ball you get, away. You get the Miami defense, and you get him hungry down here by the goal line. They're all just coming at He's going to jump all over Trey Cole. Oh, they like to score points. Not only do they like to keep people out of the end zone, they like to score points. The big touchdown in the Penn State game was an interception returned by Darren Prime. They know they've got a great opportunity to maybe cause a fumble, get an interception, take a uh, touchdown into the end zone themselves. Cole watching signals in from the sidelines. He does have some plays on a wristband. On his left uh, wrist. Not every play comes off the wristband, though. So. Got to sprint out here, try to get away from some of the pressure. Dump it out, and that is incomplete. Ball skipped in to Steve Sanders. 
It was uh, being covered by Chad Wilson. Well, incompletion will leave uh, Tech now with third and ten. A tough throw for a big quarterback like Trey Cole, rolling to his left, trying to get his shoulders turned around, his hips turned, and throw that ball back in towards the middle of the field. Now a very difficult third down situation, and they have not been very good. You can see 0 for 12 last week against North Carolina State. This one will be a very difficult one to convert. See, now, their third down numbers aren't going to get any better against Miami when you're third and nine, third and ten, which is what they've been so far. Especially here, backed up in the shadow of your own goal line. Paul from the back line is picked off at the 15. Paul White, who blocked the punt earlier, has the pickoff, and Miami's in business again. They ran the same action, three plays in a row from their own end zone. The first time he threw the ball away, the second time he put it in a good place low. This time the ball just takes off on him and it sails, and Paul White is there for the interception. Paul White, that's his third interception on the year. You know, Todd, your key to the game has been reversed in the first quarter. All the good things that are happening here have been caused by Miami in the kicking game. That whole series set up by the good punt, downed inside the one. Now, Toretta gives to Bennett on first down, and he has spun right back. Jerome Preston standing up in that middle, and he threw Bennett back after a short game. Less than five minutes to go in the first quarter. Virginia Tech team bruised a little bit. They gave up two touchdowns late in the fourth quarter to lose the game at Louisville if they thought they had won. They thought they'd won here last week against NC State with a late field goal only to see the Wolfpack tie it for the field goal at the gun. And they lost the game here early to East Carolina in the final minute. Delay handoff, and there's another big play. Well, the Tech defense starting to get something going. And getting up there is going to be Ken Brown, who got in the backfield and grabbed Donnell Bennett by the leg and just let go this time. Ken Brown and P.J. Preston, the two outside backers, only weigh about 225 pounds each, and they have great speed. They are actually more like strong safeties in a normal defense. You can see Brown close very quickly from the corner that time to make the play in the backfield. Well, let's see what kind of pressure Tech brings here on third down and 10. Miami at the Virginia Tech 15. Out of the gun, and Thomas is wide open. Touchdown, Miami. Man coverage, and that is a not a very good cause for a cornerback to try and cover Lamar Thomas' man. And he was wide open for six. When you blitz and you play man-to-man -man coverage, the thing that you have to do as a cornerback is you have to take the inside route away from a wide receiver like Lamar Thomas. That time, Henley was beat to the inside, and that gives Thomas too much room towards the middle of the field. Normally in that situation, the corner will take a hard inside technique, force the receiver to, to run an outside route. Pruitt kicks the point through, so Miami takes advantage of the interception and they now lead 17 to nothing. Paul White set it up with a pick, and then Toretta to Thomas for the touch. Toretta read the blitz out of the shotgun, and you can see Henley was beaten badly to the inside by Lamar Thomas, a good post route by the senior flanker. One thing that's a real advantage of being in the shotgun for Gino Toretta is when a team wants to blitz you, they have to show it. When you're back six yards, five yards off the line of scrimmage, you can see that blitz coming and make the appropriate read. Well, the interception by Paul White began it. And then Toretta to Thomas for the touchdown, the 18th touchdown reception of the Lamar Thomas's career, the fifth one of this season. And it's 17-0 for the Kane. Lamar Thomas is getting better and better now. You know, he missed almost all of preseason camp. He was uh, held out until the Pell Grant investigation thing was cleared up, and he was reinstated to the football team, joined the team the day before the Iowa game, but he missed a lot of practice time with his quarterback, Gino Toretta. But he made a key touchdown catch, reading the blitz against Florida State, and he's been getting better ever since that ball game. Tony Kennedy's going to bring this out. Not get very far. Flag down. As Kennedy is swarmed across the 20 yard line, or just across the 15 yard line. And the 
this time it's Tech called for the bad block. 3.44 to play in the first quarter. And on that sideline, uh, you'll always like to think positively. But you know when you're playing Miami, the one thing you fear is to have exactly this happen. You don't want to get steamrolled in the first quarter. It takes the steam out of the crowd. Well, a real key for Virginia Tech was to try to stay close, give their team a chance to win the ball game in the fourth quarter. Above the waist, in the back, against the receiving team, half the distance to the goal penalty, first and ten. Talk about getting killed by field position again. They just had the ball at the one. Now they start from the nine. Not much going good here for Frank Beamer and his team in the first quarter. Craig Cole, he went to Edinburgh University in Pennsylvania, the first stop, then the University of Buffalo. All the time, he said he wanted to come here to Virginia Tech. Get his shot, get the ball off. And Dwayne Thomas, a redshirt freshman, from Fort Myers, Florida, getting a chance to play here against the Canes from his home state. Wrapped up, and it's actually going to be a loss of a yard. Well, protecting the quarterback has been a concern for Virginia Tech. You would expect even more so against Miami. A very big uh, concern. Uh, they're so good at putting pressure on the quarterback, and, you know, we need to move him around and for him not to be at the same place every time, at least to go to different areas of the field, and, and that's, uh, uh, you know, something we need to do. Our back, or our other quarterback, Maurice DeSejo, is a little niftier, and probably in, in some ways having him this week would, uh, uh, would have been better in some regards because uh, he is a guy that can move around with the guy. Al Cole moving around there, throwing the long ball to John Rivers. And it was broken up by Terrace Harris, the free safety for Miami. At about the 45-yard line. John Rivers, tight end, who's normally the touchdown man. He's him in the goal line situations. And he only has 14 receptions on the year. Seven of them are for touchdowns. He's a guy they like to put in there and throw the ball up to him. He was a starter on the basketball team for four years here at Tech. Finished as the school's fourth all-time leading rebounder. So that's his specialty, going up in the air and catching the football. And here for the Hokies, now another third down. Third and eight, Syracuse. Coming off of a big high with their comeback win against West Virginia last week. North Carolina State showing down with Clemson today. Looks like Cole checking off here on third and eight at the 11. Off inside and Thomas is caught. And that's the free safety, Terrace Harris, on the running play. There for the stop, Casey Greer helps. Again, Virginia Tech will be forced to punt. Another uh, audible by Trey Cole. They tried to hit a quick sprint draw in there against the blitz. They read the outside pressure. Darren Smith and Armstead were showing blitz from the corner. They tried to run a quick hitter in there, but a good tackle by the free safety, Harris. Robbie Colley standing back near his goal line. Kevin Williams awaits the punt. Colley gets off a nice one this time. Oh, look at that move. But Williams going back. Looking for some blocks. Another flag down. So this one's going to likely come back. It ends up at the 45, but probably going to get pushed back. And that's always the danger when you have a return man that takes the punt and starts going backwards instead of forwards, you always run the risk of the bad blocks. Well, you're Here's exactly another. right. You set up a return one way, and you have all your guys in position to block with a return coming to that side, and when he makes the decision to change directions and go to the other end of the field, that's where you have the opportunities for those clips or blocks in the back. 51-yard punt. Nice kick by sophomore Robbie Colley. Illegal block above the waist and from the back against the return team. First down. I think sometimes Miami gets a lot of those penalties because they know Kevin Williams is the kind of guy who can break it open and really turn a game around. He ran three punts back for touchdowns last year, including a 91-yarder against Penn State. And they know that if we just give him a chance, if we can keep him alive a little bit, he may take this coast to coast. And it's uh, just a little over-aggressive by his blocking mates on that return. Two minutes, three seconds to go in the first quarter. And here's Stephen McGuire in the game. First time we've seen him today, and the senior for Miami carries it out to the 38. Two touchdowns against TCU last week, 32 now in his Miami career. His uh, senior year has been 
slowed down by a devastating knee injury he suffered last year against BC. Now this, this is vintage Miami run game. The counter trap where they pull the guard, Kip Vickers out, and he leads the play. Only certain things that you can do in a one-back offense. That is one of the premium plays, the counter trap. Second down and one. And McGuire again gets the first down as he's out near the 45. Can't think other than Miami's running game was definitely hurt early in the year by not having McGuire. You get that senior big back that you count on, and he's not there. With, with the inexperienced offensive line, it takes some time. Suffered a serious knee injury in the Boston College game last year, spent the whole year rehabilitating it, missed all of spring and most of summer camp, but he tested it at 100% last week for the first time this season. Eight first downs to Miami in the first quarter. Toretta has a man open, and that ball tipped. T.J. Preston back there and uh, got a hand up there and stopped that before it got to Lamar Thomas. When I talked to Rich Olson, the offensive quarter coordinator yesterday, he mentioned two guys, Kirk Alexander and this guy, P.J. Preston, as being great players. Preston runs a 4-3-7 as an outside linebacker. He's able to get back there in the underneath coverage, use that speed, and then go up in the air and knock the pass away. He can cover a lot of field with that kind of uh, speed and mobility. Second and 10, Miami now at their 44. McGuire inside, racked up at the line. So no game there, and this will leave the Canes the third and long. You know, McGuire is from Brooklyn, New York, went to Fort Union Military Academy. Ironically, several of the Virginia Tech players attended Fort Union Military Academy, and that, of course, being the same prep school that Vinny Testaverde went to on his way to Miami. I still can't get over the fact that there are two of them on this Miami football club, linebacker Robert Bass being the other man to come out of Brooklyn. So it doesn't produce an awful lot of football players. Here's Toretta throwing it, and it's caught for a first down. At the 41, Horace Copeland on his first grab. Tyrone Drakeford on the coverage for Virginia Tech. This is exactly what Dennis Erickson loves about Gino Toretta. Tech gets good pressure from the outside, but look at him hold on to the ball to the last minute and then deliver a strike all the way to the opposite sideline to Horace Copeland. Great toughness and patience and poise, staying in the pocket, holding the football, knowing he's going to get hit, and still delivering an accurate pass. This guy's Biggie's track champion last year. 100-meter dash winner. Zaretta going to throw it again, and this one is incomplete. Oakland out there, and something went wrong on the play, and the pass is incomplete. One thing Miami does, Toretta's done it last year and this year, they spread it out. Last year they had six different receivers catch at least 20 passes. This year they have six who caught at least 10, and six have already caught a pass in this game. Everybody wants a piece of the action in this offense. You know, the, the four wide receivers, Copeland and Thomas and Kevin Williams and Daryl Spencer have nicknamed themselves the Ruth, Ruthless Posse, but they're going to have to add Coleman Bell, the tight end, into that group now because he is catching his fair share. On the slam, Lamar Thomas to the 25 and another first down for Miami. Lundes Bird, linebacker getting back there on the coverage. Toretta reads the zone defense now. They got three wide receivers to his right. And right in between the linebackers, a strike to Lamar Thomas. So that ends the first quarter here in Blacksburg, and it's been all Miami. They lead 17-0, and they're closing in on more. We'll be back with second quarter action after these words from our local station. Go to the second quarter, 17 to nothing. This is a copyrighted telecast produced by authority of the Big East Football Conference, intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Don't use it in any way without the express written consent of the Big East Football Conference. Or else you'll have to go down and try to score on the Miami defense. Oh, hey. 
Right now, the Miami offense doing a pretty good job. Toretta has him again in business at the Virginia Tech 25. Three receivers and a handoff inside to McGuire. He got wrapped up. McGuire had a man on his hip. Don Davis, as soon as he got that handoff, and he did drag Davis forward to gain a yard of the play. It was not a very effective play, but a good call because there are very few things you can do running the football out of the shotgun. That's just a simple draw. They hand it back to McGuire, and even though they don't pick up yards, it at least shows the Tech defense that, hey, when we get in the shotgun, it doesn't mean that we're going to throw every single play. Oh, it is second down. And nine. Ball to 24. And that one is intercepted. And brought down by his own man is Ken Brown. We have flags down all over the field. There was a flag thrown before the interception and two thrown on the run back. So we'll hear about getting all of this deciphered. Ken Brown made the pick and then was brought down by his own man on the return. Toretta's thrown against his own defense. The ball just sails on him, going for Kevin Williams. And good hands by Ken Brown, the outside linebacker, is able to catch that ball with his hands and then turn it upfield. Now we just have to find out what all the penalty flags are about. A lot of, course, of laundry on the field. So the key's the first flag. And if the flag that was thrown before the interception was against Virginia Tech, it's going to nullify the play. That's what Miami seems to be signaling on the field. Well, the second one doesn't matter because the first one's going to nullify the play. And a tough break for Frank Beamer's defense. They came up with a desperately needed turnover, but they lined up in the neutral zone trying to get a little extra pressure on Gino Toretta. If I understand this right, Miami should be able to take the five-yard offside penalty. We look at the first quarter stats and the big number there, zero first downs for the Hokies. A lot of small numbers there for the Hokies offensively in that first quarter. It'll be five-yard penalty, replay second down. Yep, there it is. So Miami takes the offside penalty, keeps the football, and they'll uh, have it now at the 20-yard line, second down and five. So all the little things, the, it bounces the football or breaks have gone against Virginia Tech so far in this first half. And there's a, and they finally made the big defensive play. They need a turnover. They nullify it with a, actually a needless sloppy penalty. Now the officials still trying to straighten themselves out. Next week, we will be at Syracuse. The Carrier Dome will see Pittsburgh with their High-powered offense, Alex Van Pelt. Running back Tim Colicchio has strung together a couple of hundred-yard games. We'll Syracuse to play the Orange, but we'll be there next week at noon Eastern. All right now it is ready to play second and five for Miami from the 20. And they run a reverse here to Copeland with two blockers. And Copeland is down near the five with another first down. And Coleman Bell out there and... Uh, Kip Vickers as his convoy in Copeland gains good yardage. Bernard Basham, number eight, had contain, and he was in position, but I'm sure he's never seen speed like what he saw with Horace Copeland. They ran the scout team against them this week, showing them all the things that Miami does, but they can't simulate speed. If you don't have it, you don't have it, and Copeland was just able to sidestep Basham and take it down towards the goal line. So Miami has it first and goal at the five, already leading 17 to nothing. McGuire, the lone setback. Oh, and he got hit. Look at that fight. McGuire got stuck right on the hat, and he still was able to fight forward and get the ball to the two-yard line. Stephen McGuire is a unique blend of size, speed, and strength. He wears the same jersey number as Alonzo Highsmith, former great running back for the Hurricanes, and great leg drive there. And I think that run, as much as any, will prove to him that, that his knee is completely healed right now. 
He was able to sustain a couple tough hits and take it closer to the goal line. Yvonne Melendez Bird is down on the play. Linebacker for Virginia Tech. 17-0 Miami early second quarter. And we'll be back after these messages. Ted Robinson in Blacksburg, Virginia. Melendez Bird, little ice on the, the back of the neck there. He was able to walk off under his own power. Right now, Miami's getting ready to try to walk back in the end zone. They already lead 17-0. They're about two and a half yards shy here. Thomas and Copeland both split out wide. Wide side of the field. McGuire goes to the short side, and he is met right there. Nice play by Tyrone Drakeberger on the corner. A reminder that at the conclusion of this game, we'll select the Infinity Player of the Game selection which is part of infinity sponsorship of Big East football Miami's trying to get McGuire a touchdown if he scores one more he breaks the all-time Miami record in that category right now though the Canes are third goal at the three Reddit changing at the line McGuire again with a flag that stops the play. Illegal motion on Miami. Toretta taking a long time at the line of scrimmage to make that audible. And I'll tell you, offensive linemen, when they're down in that three-point stance, they get jumpy. They want to get off, drive their men into the end zone. They don't want to wait around before the snap count. Dead ball foul. Movement in the offensive line. Prior to the snap, five-yard penalty. Still third down. How he gets that especially is a problem down at the goal line. Well, it's a real problem because at that point, you know the key to a successful play is getting a good push, getting a surge off the offensive line, and the advantage that you have is knowing the snap count, getting an early jump. But when you make them stay in that stance for a long time, they just get a little bit itchy to go. That's the fifth penalty already on Miami. Not a positive uh, in the numbers, but you've got to say it shows you what kind of a club they are when they can overcome the penalties they have last week this week and still roll up the big numbers now they send three receivers right they only have two seconds to get this playoff and Toretta just beats the play clock and throws to a wide open man Coleman Bell for a Miami touchdown nobody near him second touchdown catch of the year for Coleman Bell and the 12th touchdown pass for Toretta. Obviously a blown coverage by the Virginia Tech defense there. Nobody was with Coleman Bell. They ran a little bit of a, of a crossing route between him and the wide receiver, and he was left all alone in the, in the left corner of the end zone. Well, unfortunately for the 51,000 fans here, this has been about a, like an offensive clinic by Miami in the first quarter plus. 18 minutes of football, and they lead 24 to nothing. Well, the worst thing maybe that happened to Virginia Tech is that they got the penalty and forced them back into a passing situation, and you can see Coleman Bell waiting all by himself in that corner. 24-0, Miami number one in the country, rolling here in the first half. And we'll be back after these words from our local station. down and appreciate the beautiful setting here. It's the first time we've been to Blacksburg and Big East Network and uh, the gorgeous setting and one that Miami's found much to its liking. Well, right there, number 68, Carlos Etheridge is an interesting story. He's a fifth-year senior who was a tight end for all four years except this one. He resisted being moved to tackle, but he finally made the switch this year. He's doing a nice job. He's always had to work to keep his weight down, but I'll tell you, he's fighting genetics. His brother is 6'6", 330, played offensive lineman, and his dad is 6'7", 260. It was just a matter of time. Pick there, fielded by an up man who runs it out across the 30-yard line. Ken Landrum on the fielding of the kick as you see the 71-yard march by Miami for the uh, last touchdown. And the Hokies now will start from the 32-yard line. I'm not sure, and I could be wrong on this, but I can't think of any other program in the country that moves players from position to position and from one side of the ball to the other side of the ball as much as Miami does. They recruit a lot of guys who are not that big but can run. They put weight on them through a, a conditioning and strength program, and then they just pick where they'll help the team the most. There's a pass by 
hole incomplete off the uh, fingers. And he's uh, getting a little upset there. Ray Crittenden heard a little uh, bit of yapping from somebody. Now the officials get in. A flag is thrown very quickly. And fortunately, both uh, sidelines, uh, coaches contain players. Don't want to see any ugly incidents as we had in Morgantown last week. And a nice job by the officials right there, stepping in and taking charge of the situation. Uh, all of us can remember what happened last week in the game in Morgantown. The officials uh, probably alerted all week this week to how they want to handle these kind of things. The pass is incomplete. We have offsetting personal fouls, dead ball fouls against both Nice job of handling the situation, but this this isn't any reflection on the official. I think that's the dumbest penalty in, in football. I mean, why waste the time of saying double personal personal foul penalties? Just line up and play the next down. It doesn't change anything. But they, I guess they have to say it. But it just seems like looks an awful good. waste of time. Looks to effective. Me. Sends a message. Second down and ten for Tech. I've not seen Vaughn Hebron today. We uh, anticipate that we would see him sometime. But the leading runner for Tech this year has not played yet. Here is Dwayne Thomas getting the ball and nothing. Nothing. Darren Smith was there along with Robert Bass. He's now getting some play as the middle backer instead of Michael Barrow. This is such a tough position to be in with Miami. They're just showing blitz now on almost every down, pinning their ears back and attacking the line of scrimmage and nowhere to run for Dwayne Thomas. Thomas really looking forward to playing in this ball game. He's from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, or Fort Myers, Florida, played at Bishop, Bishop Barrow High School, and this is his first chance to play against the Hurricanes. I guess he'll get to do it for three more years, though, here for the Hokies. Virginia Tech uh, in some confusion on third and ten. Trey Cole takes a timeout. 10.58 to go in the first half. It is 24 nothing Miami. We'll be back after these messages. Trey Cole now has his play on third and ten. From the 32. And almost intercepted off the fingers of Antonio Freeman and then it was Terrace Harris who almost had it on the deflection offensive coordinator Steve Marshall says Freeman probably has the best hands on the team but that was a ball that he needed to catch really come down they have not been able to convert a third down good pass protection that time and a nice throw by Cole Freeman needs to come down with that catch and Virginia Tech still does not have a first down in the game They've had six possessions. Robbie Colley, last one out. Williams going to let it hit. Now pick it up. Going to get outside. Oh, he got around one man. Ooh, he scooted around two men. And then Mark Poindexter makes a big hit. Drills Williams out of bounds into the Miami sideline at the 38-yard line. Well, the season for Miami taking on so many special meanings and ramifications because of the devastating hurricane that struck in August. And uh, we'll have a special look at how South Florida is rebuilding and how it's impacted on many of the people on and around the Miami football program. That'll come up at halftime. Trying to get the uh, chain gang straightened out on the far sideline there. They got tangled up in the Miami bench while the tech team has a huddle that's Steve Marshall the offensive coordinator right now he's also the offensive line coach and boy they got their work cut out for him right now he was really hoping that they could have some success running the football that they could keep this game close and give their team a chance to win it in the fourth quarter right now they really have their backs to the wall good position again for Miami from the 38 and Toretta going up and Copeland turned out now that's not something you expect to see, seniors on both ends of that play, a little miscommunication. 
Oakland turned the pattern out. Toretto was expecting him to go up the field. One of the reasons you see that is because Miami runs a lot of option routes with their wide receivers. They give them a, 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 a route tree where they have actually a couple different options based on the coverage that they read. The key thing is for the quarterback and the wide receiver to read the coverage correctly at the same time. That time, they read it differently. Toretto 9 for 15, 130 yards. Changing the play and gives to Larry Jones. And Jones is hit at the Miami bench and run out by P.J. Preston. Move the ball up to the 43 and will leave Miami with third down and five. Nice block on that left side that time by Mario Cristobal, the strong tackle. Miami plays, uh, calls their linemen strong and, and weak guards and tackles. And Mario Cristobal and Kip Vickers are the strong side. Offensive linemen, they always line up with the tight end. The weak linemen line up to the open side of the formation. Again, Larry Jones, the only setback, third and five. And Toretta throws it incomplete. Got a little pressure there on the short drop. And his pass intended for Daryl Spencer is incomplete. Well, Tech doing a little better job of just harassing Toretta. They're getting some good token pressure, just enough to throw off the timing, and that's what they really wanted to do. Miami, uh, they throw a lot of their routes, a lot of their option passes are off of timing, and if you can just get in and disrupt it a little bit, that's all it takes. Nice job getting in the vision. Now there's a low snap. And skipping into Paul Snyder, he is tackled, but the play was blown dead. And if this penalty is against Virginia Tech, it's going to cost him because it's fourth down and five. A penalty against Tech would give Miami a first down. We have offside defense slap, slapping the ball before the snap. Five-yard penalty. It is not enough for the first down. Wow. So somebody on the tech side slapping at the ball before it was snapped, but apparently they'd already prejudged that it would not be enough, and the ball is just inches shy of the 48-yard line. It's going to leave Miami with a decision here, though. They only need, from our uh, view, we're right on the 50-yard line. Looks like they need about six inches for a first down. They may go for it here. Oh, and that is twice now that penalties have just killed a big play by... Virginia Tech one killed the interception earlier in the ball game and now this one takes away a fourth down situation and a forced punt and now Miami is going to take a timeout to decide what they do while Frank Beamer gets some condolences from the officials on the sideline we'll be back with Miami's fourth down play after these messages do you remember that story about the three bears this was too big that was too small and finally something fit just right like the j30 from infinity now that's my definition of luxury it's a car you just slip right into and live happily ever after infinity makes you want to take up driving again doesn't it The challenges I receive in classes, I like a challenge. That passion for learning, that's important. The professors down here are very concerned about the students. I'm basically just getting started in everything I can do here at Tech. A proud member of the Big East, Virginia Tech. Dennis Erickson, not sure what would cause him to be unhappy at this juncture. Frank Beamer, uh, the man who's asked for and is getting an explanation from one of the officials about that penalty. What has happened here during timeout, Miami's decided to go for the first down. Again, we never saw chains brought out. We can only use our own sight here, and we can estimate they, only, they need at most six inches here for the first down. And Frank Beamer still upset. Oh, Miami lines up to get this play going on fourth down. Toretta looks like he can go straight ahead and get it. 
that he's going to give it to Jones, and Jones got stopped. He did not make it. Well, there's the first positive for Virginia Tech today. Right side of their defense just pushed Miami back and stopped Larry Jones. A great confidence boost for the Tech defense. They get penetration and one problem with a one-back offense, you don't have a lead back. You don't have a fullback. You have to try to stretch the play and find a crease, but that time the penetration by Virginia Tech stuffed that play. That is the one real drawback to a one-back offense when you don't have a lead back, an up back, a fullback who can power in there, make contact at the line of scrimmage, and open a little crease for the tailback. They're asking for the chains, which is hard for me to believe because they lost about a yard on the play. I'm not sure why they asked for a measurement there. And Virginia Tech takes over on downs. So the first positive thing to happen for Tech their defense rises up, makes a stop. They get the ball to Miami 47. And now an offense that is yet to put a first down on the board gets a chance to operate with some good field position. And they need to capitalize here. I mean, they, they really need to put a drive together, get some points on the scoreboard. Miami mixing in some different people on defense here as Cole goes back, swings it out off the fingers of Poindexter and out of bounds. Kenny Lopez getting up time now on the uh, defensive front for Miami. Baraka short also in the game at defensive end. Darren Krein was in there, really disrupted that play, forced Cole to have to loft that ball a little bit higher than he wanted to. Krein is the starting defensive left end. He was a linebacker until this year, and ever since they've moved him to end, he has really played well with three and a half sacks and 12 quarterback pressures already in six games. And the big uh, touchdown against Penn State. Cole's going to take a timeout. Didn't like the uh, view. And takes a timeout. This second quarter has uh, moved at a snail's pace. We still have 10 minutes and 9 seconds to play in the quarter. And Trey Cole is uh, a little bit befuddled. He's thrown seven straight incompletions. He's two out of 11 overall. Syracuse rolling at the vet. Philadelphia. NC State on top of Clemson. Michigan playing its 1,000th collegiate football game today, and they're playing with a little brown jug in Minnesota. Hey, how about undefeated William and Mary up on Virginia in the first quarter? Virginia playing without their star runner, Terry Kirby. Steve Marshall, the coordinator for Virginia Tech, told us yesterday that he wanted to not put too much pressure on Trey Cole to make adjustments, call a lot of audibles. They wanted to put him in a good situation to succeed. I think right now he may be trying to just get a little bit too fancy back there, trying to call the perfect play. I think in this particular situation, call a good, solid foundation play of your offense, run it, and see if your guys can block their guys. I mean, I think at this point, if you get into playing games trying to audible too much at the line of scrimmage, Miami's too good. They'll just keep mixing it up and moving people around and kind of get you to do that every single play. Second down and 10 at the Miami 47. Kennedy the only set. Three receivers left. Corner yeah. point pressure, and the ball is incomplete. Boy, Frank Cole got absolutely smacked by Dexter Siegler. Still got the ball off. Bo Campbell had a chance to catch it, and... Uh, Trey Cole is finding out about big time college football this first half. What? Miami came with a corner blitz off the outside by Dexter Sigler, and Cole did not see that one. They've been blitzing the outside linebackers. Look, he looks to the right, but now he doesn't know the corner's coming. And again, holds on to the ball too long, but that's just because he was not aware of the pressure coming from the corner. Third down now. And 10 at the Miami 47. Same formation. Kennedy rolls out, blocks one man, gets Cole a chance, and that is a completion that'll be short of the first. Freeman caught it, and he's out of bounds, two yards short at the 39. No question there that Tech's going to have to go for it. They'll need two yards. 
There you see Cole checking that wristband. About a handful of plays on that. One of them is the one Tech is going to go to here on fourth down. Poindexter and Kennedy behind Cole. And he's got Kennedy. First down, Virginia Tech inside the 30. So the Hokies get their first first down of the ball game. And they keep possession in Miami territory. I'll tell you, they've been waiting to blow that siren all afternoon here in uh, Lane Stadium. But nice job by Cole getting outside. They're moving him in the pocket a little bit. And a nice touch pass to Tony Kennedy. Just had to wait for his tailback to get there to make the completion. You don't think he's happy getting that first, uh, first down inside Miami territory for the first time today. The Hokies at the 27 of Miami. 9.50 to play in the first half. They're having a lot of official slowdowns for some reason. They have problems with Chain Gang's having a tough time on the far side <laughs> keeping the first down uh, markers straight. Tech is trying to move Craig Cole around a little bit, not just dropping straight back. I think the pass protection has been pretty doggone good so far today for Virginia Tech. Two freshmen playing guard next to the All-American center, Jim Pine, and they're holding their own in there against this Miami pass rush. Out of the eye, Caesar and uh, Kevin Patrick move across, contact made, fingers pointed. This is what I love about football, big old strong, mean guys, and they sit there and they go, nah, nah, you move first. Dead ball foul. Contact by the defense. Nine yard penalty. Still first down. What's amazing is that a defensive tackle who lines up about four inches from the football could jump off sides. I mean, he should never jump off sides if he's going on the snap, if he's watching the football. They should make defensive linemen wear earplugs so they can't even hear the snap count. All they have to do is watch the football. It's first and five now at the 22. Kennedy trying to reverse his field and drag down with a flag. Darren Smith. And uh, there'll be a face mask, yeah. I think, on Darren Smith. Flag is thrown by the official right there at the spot of the tackle. Ocek will get five yards. Tech will get five more in a first down. Darren Smith was the co-defensive player of the year last year in the Big East, along with George Rooks of Syracuse. Great speed, three-year starter at linebacker. Just got his hand on the face mask, then he pulled it off in order to make the tackle. Has great range, and, and he's a very intelligent player. Can actually play all three linebacker spots on this defense. Kennedy to the... 10-yard line before he's wrapped up. Dexter Siegler. Armstead. He's the third. Armstead, the third of the senior linebackers. The other two, Smith and Barrow, are two of the 10 finalists announced this week for the Butkus Award, which is given to the nation's outstanding linebacker. Here comes Cole to the line. Now, second down. Shy of the 10. Kennedy going outside. And he is down near a first down. At the four, very close to a first. So a little success on the ground for the first time for Virginia Tech. Michael Barrow is a guy who puts his game face on very early Saturday morning. He just fights his way, loses his footing, but is still able to get an arm in there and trip up the ball carrier. He is a very active linebacker. 14 solo tackles in the big win against Penn State. So it is first down and goal. Now it, these yards get oh so tough. Thrown out there for Rivers and a flag thrown on White. 
too many hands used by Paul White down there against John Rivers. Yeah, he got away with the first two pushes, but I think the last third, or the third and fourth one are the ones that they got him on. John Rivers, uh, you know, it's no big secret what Virginia Tech is going to do. They're going to flank him out there, put him with his six foot five frame against a smaller defensive back, and let him go to the corner and go up for a jump ball. In the end zone, the defense, the ball will be placed on the two yard line, first and go. We saw them do that against Temple. They lined up, he threw it out there. The first play was a pass interference. They did it right next play and, and scored a touchdown. So. It's no secret, but it's still very difficult to defend if the quarterback just throws it up and gives him a chance. Well, it's a first down again now at the two-yard line. Joe Swarm is in motion. And, oh, look at White was the man who came flying in there to make the first hit on Kennedy. Well, White, the man who's been very active, has been involved in some big plays here in the first half. He came zooming into that secondary to make the first wrap on Tony Kennedy. Right now, Virginia Tech's missing a, a big part of their offense. Mike Hodges, their best fullback, is out. It's a bad injury, and one thing, you can't stretch plays very long against Miami. The best way to attack them is to get them coming up the field and go right at them. The more you stretch it at the line of scrimmage and try to go east and west, they're too fast and they run down plays like that. This is no guarantee here, second and goal against no this way. defense. Oh, how's luck busted play. Something went wrong, and Cole is sacked for a huge loss. First time we've seen that formation. It might have been the first time Trey Cole had seen that formation. Miami was not fooled by the play action at all. They guessed past. They came with the blitz. You see Darren Krein gets up the field in a hurry, and he just runs right past the pulling guard. That's the guy who's supposed to protect the corner on that bootleg for Treg Cole. Darren Krein, using his great speed and burst off the line of scrimmage, just ran right by him and was right in Treg Cole's face. Well, Miami's allowed only five touchdowns by opposing offenses this year in six almost six and a half games and now Tech can push back to the 11-yard line and uh, it is once again third down and goal Poindexter and Kennedy behind Cole they go out in the pattern Kennedy the intended receiver and it's incomplete Cole is down Getting up very slowly after the incompletion. And that'll send out the field goal picking team on fourth down. So all the excitement uh, is abated for the moment. Tech got it at first and goal at the two and unable to push it in. They tried to go with a, a slow developing play action play on that second down. They wanted to fake the counter trap and then run the bootleg and in the face of that blitz and the speed of Miami's defenders it just never had a chance. They got great penetration up the field and were right in the backfield. 27 yard try here and the snap is dropped and the play is stuck by Michael Farrell. The snap was dropped by uh, William Farrell who does the holding on the field goal attempt by Ryan Williams. It never comes off from Tech. Gets nothing. Another breakdown in the kicking game for Virginia Tech. We talked about this having to be a key for them to be successful today. And another scoreless quarter for the Miami defense. So Miami takes over at their 19 with a first down. 6.38 to go in the first half. You know what's amazing when you watch this Miami defense is just the speed of their reaction. I mean, it, you know, they may miss a play or get beat for an instant, but they recover so quickly. And you could see as soon as that ball, that snap was dropped and hit the ground, Michael Barrow was right there to just swallow it up. And here comes Toretta right back to the attack, throwing, and Bell has to go off his fingertips, being covered by P.J. Preston. Miami doesn't try to fool you too much by just coming out and running the ball right at you. Even with the lead, comfortable position, they're going to come out throwing. 
Well, that's their offense. I mean, it, it's not a, a, an insult to their opponent or an attempt to run up the score. That's just the way they play football. And when you only have one back and three wide receivers in your offense, you only got about four running plays total that you can do. Loretta changes the play, and Copeland with a catch. Out of bounds, just across the 25 and a couple of yards shy of the first down. We talked about this being a conference of quarterbacks. First time we've seen Miami this year, but up and down this conference, you can tell it's a passing league. Certainly is. I mean, it's surprising to see that number being over the WAC conference. You think of Brigham Young and San Diego State, and those schools really leading everybody in passing, but some talented quarterbacks in the Big East Conference. They're down here in a very long two for Miami. And Toretta finds Bell again. And Bell is to the 40, and he's out with a first down for Miami. Well, the tight end, starting about the middle of last year, they really started to work Coleman Bell in as an integral part of their pass attack. He certainly did. In the last five games of last year, he caught 20 passes for 268 yards, and he just picked up right where he left off this year. He had seven catches for 115 in the opener against Iowa, and everybody was scratching their heads saying, how are we going to defend this passing game now? We knew about Copeland and Thomas and Kevin Williams, but how do we defend it now with a great tight end? Top thrown behind Kevin Williams and incomplete. One of the things that was said about Gino Toretta yesterday by the Miami coaches to us in a phrase that really stands out. He understands football. Now, you're a quarterback. Talk about when somebody says a quarterback really understands football. What does that mean? Well, it means he's a student of the game. It means he, he understands what they're trying to do offensively. He understands his system, and he understands defensive strategies. He understands coverages and what defenses are trying to do to stop their offense. It helps that he had two older brothers that were quarterbacks as well, and they've really spent a lot of time with him when he was younger, teaching him the, uh, the intricacies of reading past defenses. Short pass to Coleman Bell takes it to the 47. And it will be a third down and four coming up for Miami. Well, the Canes and Gino Toretta on an incredible winning streak with all the pressures involved in this program. We asked Dennis Erickson if he's had a chance to really enjoy what is going on. Well, I am. Uh, my stomach gets worse all the time, but uh, it, it's great to be involved in a streak like, these, uh, like this. Uh, but basically, because you're working with the kids that we have, it's uh, practice hard, play hard. Their goals are very, very high every time they play. Uh, uh, they won't accept anything but winning, and, and so they're very, very fun to be around. Yeah, they're fun to be around when they run like they do and catch like they do and score points like they do. <laughs> this is Donnell Bennett bouncing outside, runs for a first down to the Virginia Tech 36. Alex Wood, the running back coach, says that Donnell Bennett is probably the strongest, most physical guy that they have in the backfield. They've got four different backs that they've been rotating in. That time he got a good block on the sideline by Kip Vickers, the strong guard in the tight end, Coleman Bell. Long back, Toretta faking. Throwing on the run, and there's Bell again. And Bell, unable to be brought down, run out at the 12, first down Miami. Stacey Henley finally runs him out, fifth catch of the first half for the Miami tight end. The reason Coleman Bell is having so much success is because as a tight end, he's going to get a lot of coverage by linebackers. You see him working on P.J. Preston and Melendez Bird right there. Well, he runs like a wide receiver. He's six foot two, 225 pounds. He's not a big physical tight end, but he, he came to Miami as a wide receiver, and he has the speed to get open in the middle of the field. And off to Bennett inside, and he, well, look at him just push that pile toward the goal line as he's finally brought down about the seven. Jerome Preston and Melendez Bird inside for the Hokies. Maurice DeShazo going a little bit. He has uh, been Virginia Tech's quarterback this year. The 
really don't have any other options. Third string quarterback has never taken a snap in a game. Bennett, nothing. Got maybe a yard again, Jerome Preston. Playing an active game up front. Don Davis there as well. So the Canes will have third down at the six. They can get a first down just inside the two. Big anticipatory crowd here and very quiet as the Canes have been efficient in this first half in spent every category. Virginia Tech's going to a three-man rush with an eight-man drop right now. And you see Toretta can't find anybody, and now he does for a touchdown. Look at the calmness with which Toretta stood there and finally just threaded the needle to Lamar Thomas for six. That is what makes him a special player at that quarterback position. The ability to stay poised in the pocket, hold the football to the last moment, and wait for the receiver to uncover. This was not a designed route. The route was not open when he first wanted to go there. He just waits for Lamar Thomas to work and release open in the back of the end zone, then deliver the football. So many quarterbacks in that situation, they get happy feet, they get dancing feet, they want to jump out of the pocket and go try to make something happen. Toretta says, hey, my best shot is to stay right here and let one of my great receivers get open for me. Now, it's not a bad uh, half of football. And at this rate, that might be all Toretta plays. 31 to nothing. Three touchdown passes for Toretta, two of them to Lamar Thomas. Virginia Tech with a different defensive scheme. They dropped a lot of people into coverage, and Toretta has to wait. The play that was called was not open, and then Lamar Thomas, as a pro receiver would do, knows that his quarterback is in trouble. Just find a spot in the back of the end zone. Give him a good target to find me. Morris Copeland made a statement about Toretta that uh, might be one of the most complimentary you can say about a quarterback. It's the thing about Toretta that really stands out is that he stands in the pocket. And he's willing to stand there and wait and take a hit. He stands in the pocket. Well, that you know, what that does is that increases your sense of being a leader to your football team because they know that you're willing to sacrifice your own body to make the offense work and to come up with a big play. It inspires his offensive linemen as well as his receivers. Take will be fielded by Tony Kennedy at the seven-yard line. Brought down just across the 25 Kevin Brinkworth on uh, special teams makes the stop for Miami a lot of action in this half this will be the eighth possession of the first half for Virginia Tech and they bring out Maurice Deshazo now to run it sophomore from Stewart Virginia he played as a freshman last year as a quarterback and as a wide receiver Played a lot in the last two games when Will Fuhrer was injured. This year, those are his numbers. And they pitch the ball here to Dwayne Thomas in a nice hole. And Dwayne Thomas carries across the 35. And a great block coming in on the crack back by Bo Campbell, number 11. Just back healthy this game for the first time being 100% healthy. They run a little toss sweep. To the bottom of your screen, you're not going to see Campbell, but he had flashed in and got a great crack back on Michael Barrow, and that allowed Dwayne Thomas to slip to the outside for a good game. Second down in a yard. DeShazo with good mobility. And he's got a man for a first down. And a flag is thrown as DeShazo got hit by Rowan Marley. Throwing the football, they'll probably tack some yards on to this catch. Roughing the passer against Rowan Marley. Sonny Lubick just is raving about Rowan Marley. He just plays with reckless abandon, and you can see he delivers a great lick on the quarterback, but just a little bit late. But I'll tell you what, his defensive coordinator will not be upset for that play right there. That's what he loves about this kid. He's not very big as a linebacker. He's only five foot eight, 200 pounds. 
but he delivers quite a package when he hits you. And he's definitely not a product of bloodline. His father was the late legendary reggae singer Bob Marley. But he's cost the team 15 there, and now the Tech has the ball to Miami 40. 2.50 to go in the first half. Wayne Thomas on the carry. Good drive, and Wayne Thomas takes it to the 33. Wayne Thomas showing a little burst of speed here coming out of the backfield. They run their version of the counter trap. You're going to see Chris Berry, number 57, gets out, gets a good lead block on Marley. And it opens the crease for Thomas. And one thing, uh, with the exception of Michael Barrow, there's a lot of new players in there right now for Miami on defense. Ball blown dead there. DeShazo down on the uh, hit. And the play had been blown dead. Baraka short made the tackle for Miami. And DeShazo down at the 35. It'll be third down and five. Basically right now for Miami, you have... Darren Smith and Michael Barrow in the ball game, and just about everyone else in that front seven uh, are replacements, backups. And it's still the first half. Shazo sends Campbell split in the slot right, printed in wide right, swings the ball back to left. John Rivers has all kinds of room. And Tech gets a first down, tripped up in the open field by Casey Greer, but John Rivers takes it for a Tech first down. One way to attack this defense that is so fast is to run misdirection plays. DeShazo sprints out to the right, and it's a throwback screen, a design play to the tight end, a good block out there on Darren Smith, and a good game. Get that defense with all their speed running one way and then come back the other way against them. Chain Gang is having a rough first half over there. They can't keep up with the game. Tech and Miami are ready to play in the first little blow dead because Chain Gang hadn't moved yet. Sideline warning. Get the visitors. Sideline warning. Well, that might be part of the reason they may be having a little trouble negotiating the Miami sideline. First third down conversion, that pass to Rivers, the first third down conversion for Virginia Tech in their last 20 attempts. And DeShazo's pass incomplete. Rivers had slipped and gone down on the near sideline. Coming up at halftime, we'll have a look at the rebuilding of South Florida after a devastating hurricane of August. And how that's factored in the Miami football program that comes up at halftime. We have a minute and 11 seconds here. 31 nothing. Miami the lead. Maurice DeShazo. Very mobile quarterback. Not quite the arm strength of the pure thrower that Trey Cole is. And a delay handoff to Poindexter and the play works for some yardage. Works the ball down inside the 20. Well, Virginia Tech shows their version of the draw out of the shotgun. They're able to just kind of sneak it up in there for a few yards. A good call. Get that defense rushing the passer upfield and come up with a good play. And here's DeShazo. Got away from one, got away from two, but not the third man. Paul White again coming up out of that secondary, and he finally stopped DeShazo to bring him down to 20. And that will leave Virginia Tech with fourth down, and the Hokies will take their last timeout with 35 seconds to play in the half. DeShazo bothered by that hip pointer. I mean, his greatest asset is his mobility and his, ab his ability to run and put some pressure on the defense in that way, but he didn't practice until Thursday. He's moving pretty well, but he still has trouble changing directions, kind of turning his hips, because that, if you've ever had a hip pointer, it's a very painful injury. I mean, it hurts to, all, to do almost anything, even breathe, when you have a hip pointer. He looked pretty good watching him yesterday in the workouts for Virginia Tech. He looked like he was in pretty good shape, and they were not fooling anybody. The Hokies said they'd use him if something happened, if Craig Cole had some problems or got hurt at all, DeShazo would be in there. 
The only problem with that kind of an injury, there's really no way to protect it. I mean, right. you can put a pad on it, you can wrap it, but if someone gets a good lick in that same spot, uh, that pad is not going to help. He's just going to be sore for another week uh, if he gets a good shot on it today. Now, Frank Beamer is electing here to try and put some points on the board. He has fourth down and three and has sent out the field goal team. Ryan Williams will line up. Sophomore from Suffolk, Virginia. Straight on kicker. 37 yards. His long is 42 this year. Last time they tried it, the, the holder, Farrell, dropped the snap. This one goes down, and the kick is good. And Williams, who, uh, just like Tom Dempsey, a childhood accident, he lost part of his right foot. He kicks with a specially approved shoe, just like Tom Dempsey did, and the result is distance is no problem for Ryan Williams. He kicked that ball about 70 yards. He's got a very strong leg. He only attempted seven field goals all of last year, making four of them. That right there was his eighth uh, field goal conversion in 12 attempts for 1992. Interesting hairdo my man's got, too. A little uh, ponytail. He had a oh. baseball cap on yesterday. Yeah. I didn't see that. You're right. Walking around with his uh, dog, Gus. He's got a, he went to a uh, kicking camp run by Mark Mosley former Redskins kicker. I don't think Mark taught him how to do that with the hair, though, do you? <laughs> wow. No. But, you know, you, you know, straight on kicker. They got to stick together. You, well, yeah, where would you go? I mean, Mark Mosley about the only guy running camp like that for a straight on guy. And just that hairdo right there by another kicker just kind of goes to solidify my, uh, my bullpen suggestion <laughs> of where you should put kickers and punters on the sideline. Treat them just like relief pitchers. Put them in a bullpen. What do you think Woody Hayes or Bear Bryant would have thought about a player coming on to his team, kicker or not, with a little style like that? In <laughs> not sure he would have gotten onto the field. <laughs> May not have made it out of the locker room. Okay, let's see how Virginia Tech approaches this year. 31 seconds. Kicking off is Brian Reeves. First time he's had a chance to do that here in the half. The wind uh, knocking the ball off the tee. Jonathan Harris, Kevin Williams are deep for Miami. And a very short, high kick. And Harris will take it at the uh, 20. And he's out at the 27. 28 seconds, commanding lead for Miami. And Virginia Tech with their best drive of the half, 53 yards, engineered by DeShazo, and it got them some points. Virginia Tech's last two drives have been pretty good. They moved the football, they got in scoring territory, but that first drive, the second down stack, really hurt their chances of, of putting a touchdown in against this defense. Three receivers right, and they do run it straight ahead. Danielle Ferguson. Now he may have picked up the first down there, 37-yard line. As we check uh, what's going on around the Big East, the big lead for Syracuse at the half against Temple. East Carolina on the board first at Pitt. Alabama playing a very good Mississippi team today, and they lead in the second quarter. We here have made it to halftime in Blacksburg. It has been all Miami, 31 to 3. The Hurricanes leading Virginia Tech at the half. And, uh, you know, you kind of uh, asked some of the Miami people yesterday, you know, how do you think they'll handle coming in here first time seeing this place, sellout crowd? That's a big game for Virginia Tech, and they'll look at you like you're crazy. After what we've been through, you think we're going to let Blacksburg bother us? No, I think they love it. I mean, they love coming into hostile environments and uh, just playing playing their kind of football. All right, Dennis Erickson, the Miami coach, is with us. And, uh, Coach, that first half, you had a lot of wide receivers or receivers wide open. Well, they're doing some different things as far as combination coverage, and they're just they're just missing the coverage. And Gino's been able to see uh, 
where we're doubled and where we're single, and so uh, we've been able to get some big plays. We had a good chance to see in Gino Toretta today, Coach, that, that thing that you talked about, staying in the pocket, holding the ball to the last minute, and, and making the throw. Well, he does, and he's, he's getting better protection than he has, and he's, he's making great throws. We're catching the ball and playing good defense. We just, the thing that kills us right now that's hurting us are penalties, and we just got too many of those. Coach, are you happy with the play of your offensive line? Last week, you liked the way they performed. They seem to be opening up some holes in the running game today. Yeah, I am. I'm happy with how they're playing. You never know until tomorrow when you look at the, the, the video, but we're moving the ball, so I know they're playing pretty well. All right, Coach, thank you. 31-3, to so it's a, a rather enjoyable halftime walk into the locker room for Dennis Erickson and his number one Miami Hurricane. We'll be back with our halftime activities from Blacksburg after these words from our local station. times there in the second quarter but a lot of substitutions by the Miami defense when the game was on the line when it was close Miami just dominated the action and the most of Miami's numbers especially the first downs and passing yards came in that first quarter it was a big first half for Gino Toretta who threw for three touchdowns and Donnell Bennett scored the fourth Miami touchdown and we do now have coach Frank Beamer with us and coach how did you handle halftime with your team well, I tell them that, half, the, that first half is over. You know, we dropped every ball we could. We just didn't play well. We uh, gave them too, uh, too great a field position in Miami. It's such a great football team. I, I said before you start, you uh, make a mistake against these crowd, or this crowd, and it just magnifies, and it sure did for us in the first half. Coach, how do you approach this second half now? Do you, do you try to just establish some things with your own football team? No question about that. Uh, you know, I feel like we got to come back. We just do the things we do, play a great second half, and show we uh, can play at this level. And I feel like we can, but it's just to be seen. we got to get it done right here. Who are you going to play at quarterback starting the second half? We're going to start out with Maurice right here. Uh, both of them are kind of hurt and banged up here, but we're going to go with Maurice start now. All right, Coach, thank you. Thank you. Coach Frank Beamer graciously joining us here after a very difficult first half for his team. Things did not start well for Virginia Tech. They got the opening kickoff, three downs and out. A punt set up Miami in good field position. The Canes struck quickly to take it right down the field. Well, they ran the ball pretty effectively early in the game. A nice surge by the left side going over, over Kip Vickers for the touchdown for Miami. That was Donnell Bennett scoring to make it 7-0 after a field goal for 10-0. Miami out of the shotgun strikes with Toretta. The, sh the shotgun has really been effective for them. They get a blitz inside route by Lamar Thomas, runs the post route against man-to-man -man coverage. Too hard to cover one-on-one, -on -one, that guy. That made it 17-0 Miami. The Canes then punted and pinned Virginia Tech back at their one-yard line, trying to throw out of the end zone. Bad results for Treg Cole. Well, he couldn't get his shoulders around the ball, just kind of fluttered out of his hand there. and. Uh, the Miami defense, when they get you in that kind of a situation, they smell blood, and they go for the kill. Paul White's interception set up this Toretta to Coleman Bell touchdown strike. Another blitz from the outside, and there was a real mix-up in the coverage. Lamar Thomas takes it in uh, into the end zone. They've had too many guys wide open uh, against this defense. They're getting after the pass or Virginia Tech. They're getting some good pressure, but they're not covering the receivers. And... Uh, Actually, that, as you saw, was Lamar Thomas' second touchdown catch. There also was one to Bell in uh, the first half as well. As you see, Toretta's numbers for the first half, the three touchdowns, no interceptions. Again, a mistake free half. No interceptions, no sacks, and it was not that way for Virginia Tech's quarterbacks at all. Well, Gino Toretta did everything that he was supposed to do. The one thing that he does that, that opposing coaches have said a lot about Gino Toretta, he does not hurt his football team. He doesn't make mistakes or do things that are going to get them in a trouble situation. He makes all the right moves at the quarterback position. All right, Virginia Tech kicking off. It is Brian Reeves sending it deep. And uh, Williams in the end zone will down it. So the Canes will come out and start at the 20-yard line. And uh, we'll watch along with you and see how Miami plays it as far as substituting personnel and so forth. With a 31 as a three edge, they will send Toretta out to start the half at quarterback. Toretta now has thrown 13 touchdown passes this year and just four interceptions. Copeland and uh, Kevin Williams are split left. Lamar Thomas is right. Set back Larry Jones. He'll pick up, drops the ball over the middle and complete. Ball thrown hard and a little low. 
Beretta says, my fault. It'll be second down. You know, Toretta's nickname from his mom, not what you would expect a quarterback to be called. Precious. Yeah. A couple of the players picked up on that here, and Gino's mom called him after one game. Lamar Thomas also has a nickname for him, calls him Gino Marino, which, of course, Dan Marino, the quarterback of the Miami Dolphins, and Gino Toretta both wear number 13 on their jersey. That one caught by Copeland. And a nice move outside, run out by Stacey Henley, and that'll be uh, likely a first down at the 30-yard line. As the year goes along, and Miami still had some difficult games ahead late in the year, but they figure to be heading into the last couple of games still undefeated. There will be a lot of talk, I'm sure, about Toretta's future, how he'll rack up as a pro against the great quarterbacks that have preceded him in Miami. I think he has a good future as a pro because I think he has a stronger arm than the last couple of quarterbacks at Miami, uh, namely Craig Erickson and Steve Walsh. I think Toretta has a much stronger throwing arm than those two guys. Larry Jones running a counter, a lot of room, and another first down before he's pushed out by Melendez Bird. So quickly, Miami moving for two more first downs, and they're out across the 40. Again, the counter trap, they pull the backside guard and backside tackle. You see Diego London and Carlos Etheridge out there leading this play. They secure the corner for Larry Jones. Larry Jones burst into prominence at Miami with his uh, MVP performance in the Orange Bowl last year when he had 144 yards on 30 attempts in that ball game, and nobody had ever really even heard of Larry Jones until that ball game. He had to fill in for Stephen McGuire in that game. Everybody out in the pass pattern. And it's through Jones' hands incomplete. And that's where, God, we talked about this a lot today, but that's where Virginia Tech really gets in trouble. Miami sends everybody out. Tech has only four people running, and Toretta can stand back there all day. Well, I think that, that they don't want to take too much pressure, put too much pressure on them, committing too many people to the rush and not having enough in coverage. Because they spread you out, because all five of their receivers out in the pattern are able to beat you, you have to just try to rely on your four people getting enough of a rush to just disrupt them a little bit. They were able to do that some in the first half, but Toretta, uh, he just doesn't get flustered in the pocket, and that's, that's uh, a real problem for this defense. Chris Jones now in as a wide out. Larry Jones gets the ball and breaks through the line. Slips down, but has first down yardage. To the 46 of Virginia Tech, Stacey Henley on the tackle. And some words now, a little shoving. They just run this little stretch play. You can see it from down low. They give it to the back. It's zone blocking by the offensive line, and then they just allow the back to kind of get his shoulders turned, find a crease, and take it upfield. You got big bodies up there in front of them on the offensive line. Diego London, the, the guard, is 296 pounds. Terrell Green, the center, 292 pounds. All they have to do is just kind of get in the way of somebody and let Larry Jones find a running lane. Three receivers right, Toretta rolling that way. Going up the field, and it's intercepted, and this may be six. This Tyrone should Draper. be six. And he breaks the tackles to go in all the way. Now there are flags all over the field. It is a touchdown on the run back. There is a flag thrown where Toretta threw the football. That's going to be the key flag to watch. There were also two flags down on the run back. Well, if this eliminates the interception by Virginia Tech, it'll be the third costly time that this has happened to this football team. A big play nullified by a penalty. Roughing the passer. And then a bad block. So another terrible break for Virginia Tech. Well, actually, you really can't say terrible break. That's a penalty and a mistake they made themselves. Roughing Toretta as he threw a ball and it was eventually picked off by Tyrone Drakeford. They should still get the football, though, off the interception. If it was roughing the passer, that's a late hit. Personal foul, roughing the passer on the defense. 
The penalty's accepted. 15 yards penalty to the previous spot. First down. Illegal block. Declined. Unbelievable. I mean, Tyrone Drakeford makes a great interception. He's the fastest guy on the team, runs a 4-2-8-40. And it's just nullified. That's a third time today now. A key defensive play wiped out by a penalty. A late hit on the quarterback, Gino Toretto. You just, you can't beat Miami when you make those kind of mistakes. I mean, it's tough enough if you play a good ball game. Uh, but when you make those kind of mistakes, it's virtually impossible to upset this team. Well, Miami comes right back with the football and the 15 yards, tacking on, puts it down to the Tech 31. Personal foul for roughing the passer, judged uh, that that is not a penalty that occurred after the interception. Still part of the passing motion, and there is a Larry Jones handoff, takes the ball across the 30, right in the middle of the field. Yeah, Dennis Erickson was the coach that talked to us as he went in the locker room at halftime, moaning in the penalties and what's hurting his team, but the, the breaks have been awful for Virginia Tech in this game. And again, breaks is a, a euphemism. It's really been mistakes of their own. Larry Jones operating as the setback here on second down and nine, just inside the 30. Three wide receivers for Miami. Play clock ran out. The left game on the offense, five yard penalty, still second down. Ball backed up now to the 35. Gino, Gino Toretto was not a real heavily recruited guy out of Pinole, California. But the Pinole Valley High School, one school that was recruiting him, however, was Washington State. Dennis Erickson was the head coach of the Washington State squad at that time, and he knew what kind of quarterback he would eventually be. Kind of worked out in an interesting way. Wide open, Larry Jones out of the backfield, and that's going to be close to a first down. Rusty Pendleton, Melendez Bird. Well, this play is going to come back for holding, and, and really this game right now is just, it's just sloppy. I mean, they, there's no flow in the ball game right now. Every time something happens, there's a, a good play that is made, a penalty comes back and wipes it out. On the offense, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, replay second down. Well, you may, uh, well, this one's really going to hurt, because that's 10 from the spot of the foul, and the spot was five yards behind the line, so in essence, a 15-yard penalty is going to push Miami back to the fifth. Miami may break last week's mark. That's 11 penalties already against the Hurricanes. We're just early in the third quarter. They have second down here and 29 from the 50. Why do you think the Miami has a chance to make it, though? Loretta fakes the bomb. Now going to run it. Oh, he's well past the line of scrimmage. Loretta throwing the football, and he's about five yards past the line. Another mistake you don't expect to see you know, Toretta make. Gino Toretta, normally when he scrambles, he scrambles to throw. He's not going to scramble to try to run the football like a Charlie Ward of Florida State. Illegal forward pass beyond the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty from the spot of the foul and loss of down. Third down. So that'll move the ball back as if it was an incompletion. Put the ball right back on the 50 and now third and 29 for Miami. Well, let's see if we can have a play without a penalty here. <laughs> I'm not goodness. sure. I'm not sure. Referees may have to ice their arms down after this one. Up top, look at Coleman Bell, and that is a first down. Unbelievable. They can stand back there on third and 29 with the absolute arrogance to believe that they can make it and then go ahead and do it. 
They just have so many weapons in their wide receiver and tight end. They run four guys straight down the field. They give the tight end an option. You see Toretta kind of pump fake to the right, came back to his tight end, who's working back to the middle of the field, and the safety, Kirk Alexander, 36, is late getting over to make that play. That's his responsibility to come over and help the cornerback who is in man coverage. But the little pump fake by Gino Toretta had the safety moving to the right. Six catches, 114 yards for Coleman Bell today. And there's Copeland, and he's going to be called down just shy of the goal line. And a third and 29. <laughs> for the 99% of college football teams, that's a concession down. You just wave the right flag, hand the ball to somebody, and kick the ball away. They, Miami runs out there. I mean, they really are like a pro team. They have the, the professional belief that hey, we can make that. It's just team. another play for them. I mean, you know, they, they stretch you out defensively anyway, and all they do is just say, hey, we've got to take this one a little bit deeper. That's all. We, you know, work the same kind of stuff that we normally do. We just got to pick up some more yards. McGuire now in the game. I guess he's going to get the ball here. Tried for that record-breaking touchdown, and he got it. So Stephen McGuire gets the touchdown and he breaks the record that have been held by Melvin Bratton at Miami 33 touchdowns in his hurricane career and I would guess that that's the last that we will see of the first team offense for the Miami Hurricanes I think that Dennis Erickson wanted to get him that work in this first drive of the third quarter let Toretta come out after halftime and and have that feel for moving the team again but I doubt we'll see him anymore uh, Dane Pruitt. And that's blocked. So Virginia Tech, which has made a real mark for themselves in the Frank Beamer years here, blocking kicks. Bernard Fashion may have gotten that. Blocked the extra point. We're just going to see they're going to give it straight ahead to McGuire. He runs over the left side, and he's a strong kid, this McGuire. 215 pounds, 5'11", and he knows where that end zone is. So Miami takes the ball down to go up 37-3 early in the third, and we'll be back after these messages. Now the sun will come up tomorrow for those people, I'd imagine. They're pretty depressed right now, though probably some family members. I hope that this would be a breakthrough day. Again, it's the kind of day when you're Virginia Tech that uh, you think you can make a season based on, and today it has gone the other way. All Miami, and they now lead 37-3. to Dane Pruitt drives that kickoff. And Kennedy picks the ball up at the four. A nice hard job of running there, forced about five, six people to hit him to bring him down at the 20. It'll be Maurice DeShazo to start here for uh, Virginia Tech, a quarterback in the second half. Trey Cole in the first half, four out of 15 in his first collegiate start. Took a couple of hard knocks. Well, DeShazo's quarterback most of the year. He's been a little frustrated here. He's his exact quote a couple of weeks ago, I don't want to be baby. Feels like uh, in games he hasn't been allowed to run the entire offensive package. Find the defense to stop in front of your offensive package. All thrown out incomplete. Jesse Armstead walked right through, and there's a flag that comes down here late. But DeShazo took a punishing hit from Jesse Armstead, who just walked right through the offensive line untouched and nailed DeShazo. Well, his nickname is Superman, one of the, the outstanding three linebackers, and he just flies in, and once he realizes he's not going to get a deflection on the pass, he says, well, let me just finish him up. Looked a little bit more like Batman there than Superman. Now the penalties continue here, a 15-yard face mask penalty. It's a flagrant foul, dead ball against Miami, and it was at the point of the incompletion where it occurred to move the ball off the 35-yard line. Actually, that was away from the action. It was on Mark Caesar, number 99. He's just been taken out of the ball game. Just kind of an unnecessary penalty right there. Try to run a reverse there, and Jesse Armstead is right there, but Ray Crittenden gets away from him. 
And it's finally run out. Trying to take advantage again of that aggressive Miami defense by running a reverse. And it loses yard. In theory, that's a good call to run a reverse against this team. But they get such great penetration that the play never develops smoothly. Watch the penetration on the left side of your screen. Kennedy is right there. Darren Smith is already in the backfield, forces the exchange to be wide. Then he, then Crittenden has to gain more depth to get away from Armstead. By the time he finishes running all the way across the field, they merely, uh, you know, they end up losing a couple yards. Shays a well overthrowing his intended receiver, Antonio Freeman. And we talked in the first half. We didn't get a chance to develop it about Miami's unbelievable ability to move people around. And they do the exact opposite of what so many other teams do. Miami takes, as you mentioned, they'll take a linebacker like a Darren Crime, let's say, who can run great speed. And then also move him up to the defensive line with his incredible speed. Right. Most teams will go back the other way. Well, they'll take guys that they that they look at physically, they look at their frame, and they say, hey, we can put 20 pounds on this guy and not lose his speed. Therefore, we can take a guy and put him in a position where he's going to outmatch, because of his speed, the guy he lines up against. The Shazo is trying to run. He needs 18 yards, and he won't get it. Aaron Smith stuffs him. And DeShazo not only goes down, he's got to go down right at Miami bench. Pops up, and the uh, Tech punt team will come out. You cannot run wide against this football team. They will chase you down. I mean, the, it's a scary thought, really, when you think that their linebackers run faster than most teams' running backs. Yeah. And, and their defensive backs are even faster than that. Well, most of Miami's, or many of their defensive backs and linebackers were offensive players. They were in high school when they first came to Miami. Great punt by Colley. Kevin Williams driven back. Goes straight ahead and goes down just shy of the 30. And there are no flags down. <laughs> well, we do have a timeout with 10-11 to go. Third quarter in Blacksburg. Number one is played like it today, 37-3. to three. We'll be back after these words from our local stations. Now Frank Costa, the heir apparent. The great line of Miami quarterbacks comes in to take over. He is a sophomore from Philadelphia. Very reminiscent to people around the Miami program of Vinny Testaverde. He's the guy that they say he'll remind you most of. Swings one out here to Danielle Ferguson. Oh, and a good open field run down there by P.J. Preston, who is talking about speed on defense. He's by far the fastest defender for Virginia Tech. And he ran down Ferguson in the open field. P.J. Preston is having another fine season this year as an outside linebacker. He's a redshirt junior. Only one thing that he knows that he lacks, and that is uh, mm -hmm. the tendency to play a little bit relaxed too much sometimes. He needs to have a little bit more of a mean streak. Well, he could learn that from watching these Miami linebackers. They just turn it up full intensity every single play. Here comes Ferguson again. Look at him break outside. And... Uh, He's only a freshman, but I'm going to make a prediction. This young man next year is going to be the back that explodes on the national scene. He is uh, from Miami, subject of an intense recruiting battle. The Canes got him, and he is every indication he's the real deal. Well, they ran the counter trap. Good block by London and Etheridge, and this is what they like about him. He has that burst, that ability to take it up the sideline to explode against the defense. These other backs are more lumbering type of backs, but Danielle Ferguson, he has the ability to break it open. First down at the Virginia Tech, 44. Play fake, Costa going left and throwing, and it's tipped and incomplete. Alexander got a hand on that ball. It was intended. For Kevin Kirk Heidi, a tight end. And the uh, ball fell incomplete in the secondary. You go back to Daniel Ferguson. You figure that to play as a true freshman on a defending national championship team, you got to be something. I mean, you're just not going to walk in here as a true freshman and play unless you're special. He led the team in rushing last week, all in the second half, 74 yards on 13 attempts against Texas Christian. So he has shown what he can do when he's gotten the opportunity this year. Whoa, no opportunity there. Wow, Melendez Bird, senior. 
three-year starter as an inside backer for Virginia Tech. The smothered Ferguson. This Tech defense has been beaten pretty good today, but they're not quitting. An inside blitz by Melendez Bird. Nobody to pick him up. They were bringing both he and Pendleton. And a nice stick at the point of attack. Pendleton and Bird, the two inside backers, have started side by side for 28 consecutive games. It's been a real uh, strong source of leadership for this Tech defense. Third down, 15 at the Tech 49. Bringing a lot of people here on Costa. He's smothered as he throws it. And the ball is incomplete. Oh, they're going to call it a catch. Yes, they are. Great catch by Chris Jones, sophomore wide receiver. Looked like he may have been juggling it as he went out. That's a great play at both ends because Costa stood in there against the fierce blitz. Well, they made third and 29. They must have figured 15 was easy. A strong blitz, and he gets belted right as he lets go of the ball. And a nice job of finding the sidelines over there by Chris Jones. Watch Costas. He welcome to big time football, Frank. One right up in the chin strap by P.J. Preston. And now the chains will go on fourth and three at the Tech 37. Ferguson shifts up into a slot right. Costas quick pass is caught. And that will be a first down. Jonathan Harris, sophomore from Houston. As you see in the second half of this game, you see the future for the Cane. They've got a lot of seniors in the forefront of offense right now. But they've got, as any powerhouse program does, they've got the sophomores ready to play next year. Oh, it's amazing. They take Kevin Williams out and they bring Jonathan Harris in. And they look almost identical. They play the same position. They're both about the same height and weight. Just quick, elusive guys playing in that slot position. Here's Ferguson inside to the 30. There he is stopped. Ferguson went to the same high school, Columbus High School in Miami, Florida, that several other Hurricane players had been from. Carlos Huerta, their great kicker, Alonzo Highsmith, and current starting tackle, Mario Cristobal, all went to that same high school. I was surprised to see the distribution of the Miami players. I, they're just a little bit more than half are from the state of Florida, and I would have expected that to be a higher number. 55 out of 96. If nine players from the state of Texas, which gives you an idea of the kind of impact they've had. A.C. Tellison breaks two hits, and he's out inside the 10. And there is one of the Texans, A.C. Tellison. A suburb of Houston. You saw him break a couple tackles. He's the strongest of the wide receivers. He has a 365 bench press. And watch him just shake off the tackle right there by Stacey Henley and P.J. Preston before getting about 10 more yards on the play. Another big target. Six foot four, 205, a red shirt sophomore. This is scary watching these young guys oh, for is. Miami. Well, you don't think the coaches around the Big East are going to be watching this for next year? My goodness. Ferguson up the middle. They have first down, and they, it is not goal. They can get a first down just shy of the goal line. The Miami skill position people, Horace Copeland, Coleman Bell, Lamar Thomas, Stephen McGuire, Daryl Spencer, and Gino Toretta are all seniors. So that's a lot of people to lose. But it isn't like Miami's bereft of a replacement. No. No, they've got some quality people behind them, and they're really excited about quarterback Frank Costa. I mean, they, they think that, that he can really run the offense. When he was recruited out of Philadelphia, they felt he was the best prospect to fit into this offensive scheme here at Miami. He was recruited heavily by Penn State and some of the other Eastern schools. Ball dropped at the goal line by Kirkheide, tight end. And it'll be third down from the eighth. Some of the Miami writers have kind of nicknamed him Costa Verde because of his resemblance. He's six foot four, 215 pounds, and has a very similar look to him to Vinny Costa Verde as you peer through that face mask at him. And that time came up a little short on the pass. Probably a catchable ball, but for Tidy just getting his early action here in the ball game is not used to catching the football. Another indication of a strong program. 
Miami quarterback, she knows they don't play four years. You have to wait your turn. That's caught by Harris. Trying to get there, and he can't. Close down at the seven. That will uh, lead uh, or lead Miami fourth down at the seven and bring the field goal team out. There's no uh, there's no freshman to walk in to play quarterback here. And if you've got to be an apprentice. Costa, like everybody else, going to get two years to play. Now, you tell me that's not a clone of Kevin Number Williams, four, Jonathan yeah. Harris. Five foot nine, 165 pounds, and they're so small, they have to give them those little numbers. Number three and number five is the only jerseys that'll fit those guys. 24-yard kick here for Pruitt. And he is good. So, Dane Pruitt kicks his second field goal of the game, seventh in 12 tries this year. 542 in the third quarter. It is now 40 to 3 Miami. We'll be back after these messages. Game today produced by Paul Carlson, directed by Jim Edmonds, the Big East Conference Television Network. Next week we'll be in Syracuse. In fact, our next two weeks. We'll be bringing you games from the Carrier Dome, Pittsburgh against Syracuse. Next week, Virginia Tech will be at the Carrier Dome in two weeks. Breaking some hits and getting outside is Sam Daniels of Virginia Tech, fielding a short kick, finally brought down just shy of the 30-yard line. Did you see who made that hit? Yep, Kevin Ke Williams. Kevin Williams with a big hit. Now, let me ask you something. How many teams in the country would have one of their most prized skill people playing special teams when it's 40 to 3? I'm not sure. I don't know why he's in there, but I'll tell you one thing. He puts all of his 165 pounds into that hit Man. right there. So Tech will start now from its 29. to Shazel, the quarterback. Joe Swarm is the fullback, and Dwayne Thomas is the tailback. Vaughn Hepburn has not played in the game from Tech today. And that's incomplete. Intended for Ray Crittenden. Very close coverage by Casey Greer. Another impressive scoring drive by Miami. 12 plays under the direction of backup quarterback Frank Costa. That's got to be a good confidence boost for him. He has not played all that much this season. However, he did throw his first touchdown pass in the ball game last week against TCU. Shazel's option pitch. Whoa, Thomas made a great catch. And he has a first down across the 42, and a late flag is thrown behind the play. And that was a remarkable catch of that pitch by Dwayne Thomas. Not the way you diagram this play to be run. First option that they've shown today, and DeShazo is the guy who's capable of running it, not Trey Cole. It's a little bit of a changeup and caught Miami a little bit by surprise. Offense, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. After that kind of day for Frank Beamer. A moment ago, we saw Vaughn Hebron sitting on the sideline there. And uh, Vaughn, if he were the coach, as he told you, he'd have played. But he's not, and that's where he spent most of this afternoon, the leading runner for Virginia Tech. Had not practiced uh, for two weeks. And, you know, that, that's tough to do. When you haven't practiced, you haven't been hit at all. I mean, his leg felt fine. But the coaches felt, I think once the game got out of hand, too, that there was no point in right. playing him. I think that they maybe had plans to play him had the game been close in the first half. Shazo looks like he's checking off here. Second down and 15. And way over the head of Ray Crittenden on the far side. Incomplete. A look around some scores from elsewhere. Syracuse really pouring it on Temple now in the fourth quarter there. East Carolina. Boy, that's an impressive score at Pittsburgh. North Carolina State leading Clemson. Clemson with a new quarterback in that game today. Richard Moncrief playing. And Michigan laying it on Minnesota. 
incomplete there off the hands of Joe Swarm, and that will lead to fourth down and another flag throw in the middle of the field. They're going to call a personal foul on center Jim Pine for Virginia Tech. I mean, it, at the end of just about every play, he and Kenny Lopez of Miami have been kind of going at it, and that time the referees said that's enough. So that'll cost him 15 and still be fourth down. But field position and stratagems at this point are uh, kind of uh, 4.57 to go in the third. The passing for Virginia Tech today just hadn't been very effective. Now DeShazo has just thrown six incompletions in a row, and he's only two of eight for 18 yards since he's come into the ball game. They try to get him on the corner, rolling out, but he just hasn't been able to uh, find a receiver right now. Virginia Tech's passing a six for 23 today. Kevin Williams fields that hop, and he makes it to midfield before he's brought down. George Del Rico, linebacker, down on the hit on special teams for Virginia Tech. Four minutes, 45 seconds to play in the third quarter here at Blacksburg, Miami, number one, pouring it on 40 to three over Virginia Tech. We'll be back after these messages. And hopes were high today in Blacksburg, but I guess it's a season of um, maybe some things that just haven't been meant to be for Virginia Tech. A lot of heartbreaking losses, and today they're getting pounded by the number one team in the country. Frank Costa hands it off. Donnell Bennett had not been in there for quite a while. Bennett runs it to the far sideline and is brought down at the 47 of Virginia Tech. And Bennett gets one down and now comes back out. Dennis Erickson's a Western guy. He's spent his, almost his entire life in the Western United States, but since he's come to the East, look what he's done at Miami. Unbelievable. Only one other coach won a national championship in his first year as a head coach. That was Barry Switzer at Oklahoma. Danielle Ferguson is down as he gets it inside the 45. A lot of people, when Dennis Erickson was hired, because he didn't have a national reputation here, a lot of folks wondered about his selection. But people in the West who knew Dennis Erickson knew that he was one of the outstanding offensive football minds. He had been an offensive coordinator for some very high-powered teams. San Jose State had been a great head coach at Idaho, Wyoming, and Washington State. And it turns the programs around in very short periods of time in those places. Well, he didn't have to turn anything around when he came to Miami. It was just keep the ship steered straight. Danielle Ferguson. I think what's happened is that Ferguson gets to the 33. I mean, I think, you know, winning is the key. But I think in Miami, you know, the expectations are so high, you have to have good offense. And that's where Erickson comes in because he's a guy who's really been tremendous with the one-back offense. He really has. They really spread a defense out. And when you get all those guys out covering receivers, then you can run the football. And again, Danielle Ferguson shows us that he's got that burst. But Danielle uh, has that call wiped out by a hold. Has the uh, run wiped out by a hold. So that marches Miami back. You see Danielle Ferguson, you can see that little green bandana sticking out of the back of his helmet. That's kind of a good luck charm that his mother gave him and he wears in every football game. He's done it for about the last five years, all through his high school career and now at the University of Miami. I wonder if he washes it after the games or if he just I keeps hope. wearing it that way. Hope they don't let him on the plane without <laughs> washing Miami will be going home. They have West Virginia, another Big East phone next Saturday. That'll be a night game at the Orange Bowl. Four straight games against conference foes for the Hurricanes. And that is, well, no, yep, now it's called an incomplete pass. Costa was in the act of throwing when he was hit by P.J. Preston. And that's ruled an incompletion and will bring up fourth and long yardage. Great play by P.J. Preston. At least he's showing that he is going to fight to the very end. He comes off the bottom of your screen, gets right around Danielle Ferguson, and gets his arm right up on Frank Costa's arm, causes that incompletion. 
4-3-7 speed, and he can really come hard from the corner. Ooh, a shank. Paul Snyder, Miami punter, just flat out shanks one. And it's out of bounds at the 39 of Virginia Tech. A punt of just, the, well, barely 20 yards. Virginia Tech, pretty good field position with 227 to go in the third quarter. Now, Big East Conference next week will have a first in the football conference. A weekend of uh, complete round-robin play. All eight schools will be involved in conference games for the first time ever next Saturday. We'll be in Syracuse. Virginia Tech will be at Rutgers. BC gets back for the first time in a month to host Temple. And a uh, big game for Miami next Saturday night at home against West Virginia. They are so rapid now for the Eagles Boston College that their game tonight playing Tulane down at the Superdome in New Orleans been picked up by uh, live Boston television tonight. That's uh, a lot of what was caused by their great win at Penn State last week. A lot of excitement caused by the Eagles, and of course, you know, it's helped them. Uh, the fact that the Red Sox did not have a good year, the fact that the New England Patriots are off to a very slow start, have not won a game, and everything in New England is kind of focused on Boston College and their football program. Here's Dwayne Thomas carrying, and he is brought down at the 39. He's a couple. Could you imagine last year, and another flag is thrown. What we'll do here, folks, for the remainder of the game is we'll inform you when a play is completed without a flag going down. <laughs> and uh, well, there's just a lot of extracurricular stuff going on right ball, now. Ball, personal foul, late hit against the defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. That was Malcolm Pearson, number 38, the backup strong safety. And, you know, just over-aggressiveness. I mean, these guys are glad to be in the game now. A lot of the backups for Miami's defense, but you just have to play within the whistle. Well, the ball goes down to the 45-yard line as uh, Joe Swarms runs it straight ahead for about a yard. Kenny Lopez on the tackle. Just getting back to what we're talking about. Last year, Miami... Played its final uh, regular season game at Boston College, and it was a highly anticipated night. It was a night game. Turned out to be a wonderful game, 19 to 14. Miami won. It was a, kind of a coming of age for BC. Could you imagine what the anticipation will be like this year if the last game of the season were Miami and BC? Warren goes straight ahead. Look at this. Joe Swarm is going to be run out of bounds inside the 10. The man who loves this play the most is the guy who ran this play last year. He's working right here with us, Phil Bryant. He just graduated fullback for Virginia Tech's football team spot for us today. And he, yeah, this is the way I ran it, right, Phil? <laughs> <laughs> Little quick hitter up the middle. They, they get that fast, penetrating defense, and Joe Swarm, Shows a little bit of speed going down the sideline. Swarm is filling in for the injured Mike Hodges, and Swarm is the older brother of defensive end Billy Swarm. So they both are getting a lot of playing time today here for the Hokies. Face mask tacks on the end of the run. Bill Bryant, who's spotting for us today, we thank him for his work. Uh, back here at Virginia Tech, to finish work and getting his degree. And the Hokies have a chance to punch it in here. First and goal at the four. We have less than a minute to play in the third quarter. You don't think Miami wants to keep them out of the end zone? All the linebackers are back in the ball game. Oh, and Dwayne Thomas got wrapped up next to Siegler, got in first, got him around the legs, and he fell forward to Thomas to the three-yard line. Warren Sapp was also in on that play. Sonny Lubick told us that he is a guy who is really coming into his own on the defense. Said he's really playing well, defensive end, six foot three, 280 pounds, a red shirt freshman. He had 11 tackles last week against TCU, along with five quarterback pressures. So he's a guy that is emerging as a new star on that defensive line. Poindexter, ooh, it looked for a minute like he might get in, but he has stopped at the two. And you look down there and you see number one Armstead, and number 56 Barrow getting up, and 45 is out there, Darren Smith, those three hitmen. 
are back in the game here on the goal line defense. Michael Barrow does not miss many tackles. When he gets his arms around him, he says, uh-uh, we stop right here. We showed you the play and the tease that he made in the Penn State game. That's got to be one of the great plays in the history of college football. The fourth down stop he made against Richie Anderson. Third quarter ends, Miami leading 40 to three. Well, up the fourth quarter after these words from our local stations. There is a mountain growing in Washington, a mountain of debt. It's the federal deficit. Bob Graham's doing something about it. He has a plan that's tough and fair, a balanced budget amendment to keep spending under control, a line item veto for the president, federal spending cuts, economic growth and new revenues. Bob Graham knows it can be done. He balanced eight budgets in a row as governor. Bob Graham, working for Florida. Central Florida for Kissimmee Toyota's hottest sales event of the year. Now you can try for free through 93. That's right, no car payments till 94 on any new Toyota in stock. Regardless of equipment, Camry, Corollas, Tercel, two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive. It doesn't matter. Choose any new Toyota in stock, then drive it for free all through 93. Where? Only at Kissimmee Toyota. And remember, if you're not happy with your deal, please don't leave till you see me. You know, you'd think these people would have learned from the Atlanta Braves in the playoffs. Although, these, <laughs> I don't like these odds. <laughs> Not against this defense. No, I don't like the odds. Here's third down and goal for Virginia Tech. And there's a touchdown. Mark Poindexter. Senior fullback takes it in for his first touchdown of the year and the first of the day for Virginia Tech. Diehards who remain caused a cheer. And for the band, a chance to do something other than the hokey pokey. When you're Virginia Tech, you'll take any form of victory you can get. And right now, scoring a touchdown against this defense is the best that they could come up with. A nice drive by the Tech offense. Ryan Williams goes through the point. And there are no flags. They fake the toss, and then they hand back to the fullback. You see Barrow is going for the toss, and whoop, the fullback slips right back inside of it. A well-designed play, nice fake by Maurice DeShazo, faking the toss, then handing back to the fullback. 40 to 10 now. Miami will be back after these messages. Of course, it's such that. Vaughn Evans telling him, at least you get in there and get one. For Poindexter, that was his first touchdown on the season. He gained 168 yards coming into this ball game, but zero touchdowns. So you got to feel good about that. Good I drive. Was, I was kind of hoping I'd see you today with that, that young girl at the VT on her left cheek there. I kind of hoping you'd get one of those pins on there. Today. <laughs> I can't be partial. I didn't say that. I just thought it'd be a nice adornment. I think Sherry'd like that. <laughs> See, the wind is really picked up as the day is worn on here. Pretty strong breeze blowing. The ball will be held for Brian Reeves to kick off. 40 to 10, Miami with the lead. And Jonathan Harris fields the short kick. And he's out to the 28 or 29 yard line. 40 points today for Miami. Second most they've scored this year. They got 45 last week in the TCU game. And uh, through three quarters, the numbers do not look any prettier from the Virginia Tech side. Miami with uh, 142 yards on the ground so far. So they're starting, obviously, their play the last two weeks against teams that have not been as competitive as Florida State and Penn State. They're starting to make their running numbers look a little more respectful. The only thing Miami has not done well today is uh, just too many penalties. 15 again today, 16 last week. Oh, boy, Kevin Williams. Wow, if he had had just a little more room, he could have turned the corner and gone there. And he ran out. 
at the uh, about 46 yard line of Miami. They just bring a little bit of a middle screen back into the middle of the field. You can see Kevin Williams, he's so fast that his lineman couldn't even get out in front of him. He just said, forget you guys, I'll take it to the sideline myself. Williams out now. AC Tellis and Chris Jones in as the wideouts. Danielle Ferguson. Play fake, Costa rolling out, getting Harris to block for him. And now throws to a wide open man, and it's Tellison breaking hits. Well, you can see he's gonna be a factor here too. He's so big, tough to bring down for, as Virginia Tech has a little bit of a smaller secondary. He's a versatile athlete in high school. He played quarterback, running back, and wide receiver. He's got 4-4 speed and very strong. You can see in the brief th times that we've seen him this afternoon, the ability to break tackles. And quickly, Miami, two plays. And they're at the 24-yard line of Virginia Tech. That's about what Miami's offense really disheartened you. Stephen McGuire in the game goes straight ahead. You know, your defense, and you feel like you've just gotten back on the field, and boom, you, you know, you're down to your 25-yard line. Trying to guard your end zone. They can chew the yards up so quickly. They are a big play offense. I mean, you know, say whatever else you want about their offense. What makes them deadly and dangerous is their ability to, to strike you quickly with big plays. And they can do it from all parts of the field. And it really, as we've seen earlier, it does not matter what the down and distance is either. Second down here, eight to go from the 22 of Virginia Tech. Costa stepped up called a timeout but there were flags down so he didn't need the timeout Costa walked away from the line but there were a couple of penalty flags thrown dead ball foul movement of the offensive line before the timeout was called five yard penalty still second down Terry Monk, our official, our referee, with the announcement. Syracuse is now 6-1 overall. Temple 1-6, and the Orangemen still have never lost the Big East Conference football game. East Carolina, big lead. That's going to be a tough game for Pittsburgh right now. Paul Hackett at home. North Carolina State with a comfortable lead. So does Alabama in the fourth quarter. And Michigan piling it on Minnesota. And Virginia coming back, they're playing uh, undefeated William & Mary today. Notre Dame leading BYU. First time those schools have ever played. On our fourth scoreboard. See Alabama winning today easily now in the fourth quarter. Uh, Sugar Bowl representatives are here at this ball game, and I know that they are just hoping that both yep. Miami and Alabama can finish out the season undefeated, setting up a possible national championship game in that bowl game. Well, that's uh, as we start heading down to seventh, eighth games of the year, you start thinking about the bowl situations with the new bowl coalition this year. We're a long way from that happening. Miami still has to play at Syracuse and at San Diego State. Alabama still has their annual matchup with Auburn, but. If the season were to end today, today you'd have that matchup. Alabama and Miami would play in the Sugar Bowl. You mentioned an, a wrinkle that really could affect this, though, with the SEC this year. Well, they're playing a championship game. They, you know, it's a, it's a big thing that they're doing. They're going to have a, a final playoff game in Birmingham. They're going to make a lot of money on it. But it just means one more difficult game for uh, the best teams in the SEC to play. After the... Uh, Penalty. Larry Jones slipping and going down. Leroy Charlton, who's a Miami native, getting a chance to play here. And Keynes, a sophomore in the Virginia Tech's very hopeful he can be a contributor on defense. He is a physical specimen. He's six foot five, 243, a redshirt sophomore. He didn't have to do too much on that play, though. Larry Jones kind of did the work by slipping on the turf. But it's got to be exciting for a kid like him uh, from Miami Springs High School, as well as the running back, Dwayne Thomas, both kids from Florida, playing against the team that they probably read and hear about every day when they're back home. Third and 15. Costa under pressure, and it goes through the fingers of Ferguson. No, had a chance to get the first down. Don Davis put all the pressure there on Costa. 
And the great Brown will bring up fourth down. A lot of substitutes in on that offensive line. You can see Bernard Basham working on big Ricky Perry and good pressure up the middle by Don Davis. Costa alertly finds the hot receiver in the fullback Danielle Ferguson, but the ball is a little bit high. Well, here's a long field goal try, but not yet. Center just got absolutely smothered for Miami. Tom Patterson is the snapper, and he just got bowled over. Virginia Tech perhaps a bit anxious in their attempts to block a kick. Dead ball foul, offside, on the defense, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. So Dane Pruitt here is going to get five yards in his attempt at a swirling wind here to try and boot one through. That's another small victory Virginia Tech can try to take away here, see if they can block another kick. They haven't blocked anything that's been a factor in this game today. One at PAT. Forty-one yards now on this try. And Pruitt got it up there, and it is good. What an impressive kick by Dane Pruitt. His third field goal of the game, and he's kicked the two long ones, 44 and 41. Miami now leads 43 to 10, 12 and a half to play. We'll be back after these words from our local stations. Oh, just so poignant on your left cheek. <laughs> and then you can get Ibis, Sebastian, the Ibis painted on your right cheek, and then you can be balanced. I don't think so. Not even if that young lady volunteered to paint it for you? Don't think so. <laughs> Dane Pruitt here to kick off. And another thriller to the near side. Hot right to Tony Kennedy's midsection. Oh. Running that back is Tyrone Drakeford. And uh, he is stopped just shy of the 30. Chris DeShazo back out again for Virginia Tech. The hope he's going to Rutgers to play in New Brunswick next week. And then at Syracuse in two weeks. There's Dwayne Thomas, good hole up the middle, and that's a first down game. Dwayne Thomas near the 40-yard line. Well, out of the uh, adversity of not having Vaughn Hepburn today, the Hokies may be looking and learning a little something about Dwayne Thomas. He had an outstanding spring practice. He was voted the top, top offensive newcomer for Virginia Tech, and he's a guy that they feel is really going to be an impact player for him down the road. Probably getting a little more action today than he probably anticipated coming in here. Out of the eyes, set first down at the 40. It's been a tough year for Virginia Tech as Joe Swarm is wrapped up by Kenny Lopez on the Miami defensive front. Kenny Lopez is another backup defensive tackle. Six foot three, 275 pounds, and just gets good penetration. Again, that's the trademark of this defense and their front people. Get penetration, disrupt the line of scrimmage, and create havoc in the backfield. Lopez, a junior from Key West. Shazo running an option, and a late pitch puts the ball down, covered by Dwayne Thomas at the 43. Second time DeShazo's made an errant pitch on the option. Thomas alertly able to cover that. You know, Virginia Tech this year had to replace Will Fuhrer, who was a very good quarterback here. They had to replace a boatload of offensive linemen, including Eugene Chung, who was a first-round NFL draft pick. And uh, this year, really, their offense has been the question mark. They just haven't been able to score points with any consistency. They haven't had real consistent play at the quarterback position. They've got a lot of young guys, two freshmen playing at the guard position. They've got a great center, but just a lot of young, inexperienced players back there. There's Kennedy throwing an option pass, and that'll be an interference call. 
So Virginia Tech going into a little razzle-dazzle. Tony Kennedy airing one out. Brian Still was the intended receiver, and uh, Chad Wilson not aware of where the ball was, ties up Still, and that'll be a penalty on Miami. Brian Still's another freshman that they're very high on here at Virginia Tech. He's six foot, 160 pounds out of Richmond, Virginia. He was getting a lot of work in practice on Thursday and Friday, <laughs> trying to work him into the wide receiver rotation. On the defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. You know, a problem for Virginia Tech, they have some talented people at their wide receiver position, guys like Antonio Freeman and Bo Campbell and Brian Still, but it really doesn't matter if you can't get the football to them. I mean, they become a non-factor in the game if you don't have the ability to get the ball in their hands and let them create some things. And the problem for Frank Beamer is, is the timing was a little bit off. He lost Fuhrer this year when a lot of his other people, Freeman, Campbell, Hebert, Kennedy, were all seniors. And next year, he loses all those people when DeShazer will have had a year of experience. Well, Dwayne Thomas running nicely, and that's another first down for Virginia Tech. To the 31 before C.J. Richardson brings it down from Miami secondary. They feel this guy is going to be a great player here. Good blocking on the right side. Good block by the fullback, Joe Swarm, and he's got a little bit of acceleration, a little more acceleration, I think, than either Tony Kennedy or Von Hebron have, the two senior tailbacks. That's 40 yards for Dwayne Thomas now on nine carries. And a first down, Virginia Tech, 31-yard line, 43-10, Miami the lead, just about 10 minutes to play in the game. DeShazo screen there to Ray Critton and nothing. Look at Miami close again. They close on the ball so well. Dexter Siegler, defensive corner, made that play for the Canes. Dexter Siegler was an outstanding quarterback in high school. He's got four or five speed, and as you say, they read that play, and DeShazo had a little too much air under that ball. The receiver had to go up in the air and catch it. By the time his feet came back down on the ground, Siegler was right there to totally wrap up the play. And you may complete that play, but they're going to make sure it's not going to get further than the push one. And Thomas, boy, nice job there. Broke a hit in the backfield. He gains a couple of yards. Both these teams in the midst of playing a Big East Conference foes, and the two more of them for Virginia Tech. On the road, though, the next two weeks, then back home here against Southern Miss and their Arch rival Virginia here for the final game of the year. Miami playing four straight today, the first of four straight conference games. And they close out with that tough double at Syracuse and then at San Diego State. About Marshall Falk against this Miami defense. That'll be an intriguing match. Joe Swarm stopped short of a first down, got to the 23. And it's going to be fourth down about two here for Virginia Tech with eight and a half minutes to play. We'll be heading to Syracuse next week. We'll watch Alex Van Pelt. And uh, Pittsburgh offense going into Syracuse to play the Orangemen who won today to go six and one. We'll be there at noon Eastern next Saturday. And off Thomas, and he got it. First down for Virginia Tech. Well, and Marley made the tackle, but Dwayne Thomas gets the first down. Nice block by Mike Cox, number 69. Another redshirt freshman leading, and another block by Joe Swarm on Rowan Mar Marley. Marley still able to make the tackle, but not until Thomas has the first down. So a lot of young guys getting some work for both teams in this ball game, and that's probably the only positive thing coming out of it for Frank Beamer right now, getting to take a look at a lot of new kids. And of course, for, for Virginia Tech, you have to try to find a positive take out of an experience like this. And I think what you do, and what a lot of these young players are finding out is, hey, here's exactly what we need to do to play at the top of the Big East Conference. We need to be able to take on Miami play at this level. Right. This is something they're learning in their first Big East Conference battle with the Kings. And they're going to be playing them for the next three years. And so they've, they've got to see this is the team that has set the standard for our conference. And if we want to compete for the Big East Championship, we have to be able to play at this level. Pitch out here to Thomas. He got outside. 
And Wayne Thomas punches that ball down near the 15-yard line. Or Chad Wilson brings him down. They've had some success running the option. DeShazo takes it to the corner, and Thomas, if, now if Ryan Steele can just stay on that block a little bit longer, Thomas might take that one into the end zone. He's a freshman wide receiver out there blocking, trying to hold up, and that play takes a long time. You just gotta stay with that block until you hear a whistle. If he does it, Thomas scores. Third down and six for the Hokies. Option coming to the wide side. Nope, it was. And Malcolm Pearson said, uh-uh. And he drops to Shazo for a loss. Miami does not practice against the option that much because, of course, their team doesn't run any form of it. It's taken them a couple times to adjust, but this time they bring the strong safety in to take the quarterback. They had the pitch man covered as well. Would you guess they may practice against the option the week before they face Syracuse? Well, they'll have to. I mean, you've got to be able to, to prepare to defend everything that Syracuse is going to throw at you, and the option is definitely a big part of that. We have a timeout. Virginia Tech calls it with 6.13 to play. 43 to 10 Miami. We're back after these messages. So Miami with a comfortable lead here. We wind down towards the end. What will be Miami's 25th consecutive win. Three touchdown passes by Gino Toretta in the first half. And a 500-yard day on offense. Out of the shotgun here, fourth and ten. And DeShazo throws it up. And Rivers went up and caught it. Great catch by John Rivers for the Virginia Tech touchdown. The guy has done it again. Eight touchdowns in his career now on, on only 15 receptions. It's the old rebound play. DeShazo just throws it up for the big guy, and Rivers, great instincts, going up, catching the ball at the very tip of the tight. And you can see, that's just great timing on the jump by John Rivers. You know, it's funny, Virginia Tech just did there exactly what they were worried about Miami doing. Big, tall receivers jumping over their little defensive backs to catch the ball, and Rivers did it for the Hokies there. Ryan Williams misses. The extra point is the field at that end is littered with Here's the pizza cart, cardboard cart of some sort. And uh, Virginia Tech has scored its second touchdown in the game, and we have six minutes and seven seconds to play. It is now 43 to 16, Miami. Eight points against Miami today, as any club has all year. They've equaled the 16 at Florida State put on the board, and uh, Florida State, remember, did that with no offensive touchdowns. This game is played a little differently in the intensity of the second half. Not the same for Miami. But again, if you, if you take, you got to find something to take away from this game, and that's it. We were able to get the ball in there twice on it. You know, one of the things that we've talked about, the, of course, the great win streaks of Miami and how dominating they've been over the last 10 years. But one thing that's really interesting about this program is the apparent sense of legacy that, that they have at Miami from past players who are now in the NFL or not playing anymore. The contact, how closely they stay involved with the program at Miami and even personal contact with the current players. It's really an amazing thing uh, when you look at the Hurricane program. Jonathan Harris running back and kick there. Well, the word they use is family, and they use it around their football club in a very literal sense. Either you are or you aren't, right? And uh, you go there and your family, they really got on uh, Tamarick Vanover, the Florida State player who ran a kickback for a touchdown against him. Vanover was highly recruited by Miami, chose not to go there, and they got on him because he wasn't family. Ryan Collins now, redshirt freshman, the third teamer for Miami's in the game. He's from Pembroke Pines, Florida. Second game that he's had a chance to play in. And he look at him, aired out right away. And it's over everybody's head, intended down there for Chris Jones. You can see on the helmet there of Miami's players, they've got the decals of the two initials. SC and JB for Sean Curry and Jerome Brown, the two players that were tragically lost this year uh, in the offseason and tragic deaths. 
they remember the players that were uh, such a big part of the early success for the Miami Hurricanes. And you even see the carryover with Michael Irvin of the Dallas Cowboys wearing the same initials on his helmet. Uh, there's just a, a tremendous tradition and sense of relationship between former and current players in the Miami program. There's a handoff to Jason Marucci as Del Rico makes the hit. And it's going to be third down here with five and a half minutes to play as you look along the Miami bench. Brian Collins is a little different than the sort of typical Miami quarterback. Here's a guy with great athletic skills, much more mobile. Rich Olsen, their quarterback's coach, compares him more to a Charlie Ward type. Well, he didn't make anybody miss there. Ken Brown got him. Charlie Ward makes you miss, and that's what they'd like to think about Ryan Collins. But that time, Ken Brown got him for a big loss. Ken Brown and P.J. Preston, the two outside backers, have played a lot of plays today for this Virginia Tech defense. And still able to come up with the big play. He's got great speed, and he had a great year last year. He started nine games as a true freshman, 54 tackles and three sacks, and having another fine season this year for the Hokies. Snyder punting and Bo Campbell, leading punt returner in the nation last year. Trying to get some blocking, not much there, and he's covered up as he's to the 48 of Virginia Tech. Well, the Hokies will get the ball back here with 4.32 to play. 43-16 for Miami. What uh, continues to amaze me, Todd, is over the years you look at this game, this will be the 55th great win for Miami against unranked teams. Now, people may say, well, they should beat unranked teams with their great talent. Yes, but to go that long, 55 straight, without ever a slip, particularly going into arenas where they're hostile, a place like this where it's the game of the year for the Virginia Tech Hokies, and that's uh, that's quite an accomplishment. It's very impressive because you know every team that they come into play like that, it's gonna that's gonna be the game that they get up for the most, a chance to knock off the big dogs in college football. And it just shows you that the coaching staff of Dennis Erickson and the players are just motivated enough in their own selves to, to not have a mental lapse, you know, to, to take anybody lightly, to play with the same kind of intensity. We talked about that being a key today for Miami, to maintain their intensity and focus. And they proved today that they don't take anything for granted right now. And Virginia Tech found that out. beginning of an annual series of course next year the Big East Football Conference will be begin round robin scheduling all the conference teams will play their seven foes boy the Shazo drills a bullet into a diving Joe Swarm just across midfield play gates five four ten to play 43 16 Miami leading See, this year, Syracuse is the only conference team this year playing everybody. But unlike last year, more conference action. Everybody playing at least four conference games. That was not the case last year. But to the credit of the Big East Conference, they did not ask any of the conference members to break existing contracts these first two seasons to create the round-robin schedule. 93 was the earliest it could be put into effect. There's a first down game by Dwayne Thomas. What's got to be encouraging to Frank Beamer about these last couple drives is not, you know, sure it's the second team defense and some reserves for Miami, but he's got his second team offensive line in as well. It's not his first liners. So a lot of good productive work by his backup offensive line right now. Shays are rolling to the wide side. Now he's going to try to get out of some trouble, and he did. And a chance to throw to an open man, short, and it should have been picked off. Uh, he had Bryant still out there, but the ball was short. And uh, Marcus Carey was back there and had a chance for the pick, but Bryant still actually came back and broke it up. 
We mentioned those decals on the helmets earlier in the season. They had the numbers on their helmets. Uh, their Mi the Miami numbers of former players Shane Curry and Jerome Brown. That was a NCAA violation having extra numbers on their helmets, so they had to go with the initials. But it's something that was very important to them, uh, a statement that they wanted to make about how deeply they felt the loss of those two players. Wide open, Bo Campbell. He went down to a knee, played dead, but that'll be a first down. 24-yard line. So Bo Campbell takes it down to the 24. It'll be a first down for Virginia Tech with 250 to play. Just the second catch this year for Bo Campbell, who had seven touchdown catches last year. Well, it's been a very frustrating year for Bo. I mean, he came in with a lot of great expectation. He had a dislocated elbow, and he missed the first uh, three or four games of the year. Then he came back. The elbow was okay. Then he hurt his knee, and so he was out for a couple more weeks. He only returned punts last week. He's just now getting back to full strength, and the season's half over. Ronald White. Ball goes inside the 20-yard line. Ronald White on the carry for the Hokies. Pittsburgh with a third-quarter touchdown now as we check back in on our Ford scoreboard. Ranked teams in the ACC battling. Alabama hoping to close out Ole Miss. And I'll tell you, Michigan. Clearly the class of the Big Ten. That's a good catch. Bo Campbell caught it and held on. He got a bounds inside the 10. Big first and goal. Well, uh, there's a little record in trouble now for Miami. Well, Bo Campbell's got all kind of ability. A nice throw by DeShazo. He got his shoulder square. And Campbell gets enough for the first down and keeps his feet in bounds. Bo was the leading receiver on this team last year. He also led the nation in punt returns. He's got a lot of ability when he gets his hands on the football. Shazo scrambling. He's got a man for a touchdown. Brian Still. They got away with one there, too, because one of the offensive linemen for Virginia Tech was down in the end zone. They were trying to throw that throwback screen to the tight end. Miami had it covered. DeShazo changed directions and threw it back to the end zone, and they were very lucky that that play was not nullified for a penalty. First collegiate touchdown for the freshman from Richmond, Virginia. Well, the first team, Ryan Williams comes out to kick the point here. One good and it's 43 to 23. Watch this play now. They were going to try to throw this throwback screen to the tight end. You can see the Shazo's looking, it's all covered. So he scrambles to his right and throws back into the back of the end zone. And they get the touchdown, but you can't see it onto your screen. Damian McMahon, the backup guard, was all the way down around the two yard line when this play was completed. Good throw by DeShazo, finding still in the end zone. And look, right there, 54 <laughs> runs in front right. of your screen. He's trying to get off the field. We were supposed to run a screen pass. <laughs> What's the ball doing down here in the end zone? Well, hopefully, uh, as we have learned, uh, we learned very firsthand in Morgantown last week, officials make mistakes, and I'm sure that'll be a play that will be scrutinized by Dan Woolridge, the Big East supervisor, when he looks over the films of this game. The uh, Hokies have scored 23 points. Now, that is the most points scored against a Miami team since December 1st, 1990. San Diego State got 28 against Miami. And just the third time in the last 25 games, this will be 25 straight wins for Miami, just the third time in this 25-game winning streak that the team has scored 20. Well, I'm sure that phone will be ringing in some of the uh, players' apartment, apartments down in Miami. Some of the ex-players call and say, why'd you let that team score oh, yeah. so many points the against you? You know those <laughs> defensive guys, the, the Russell Maryland's, the Maurice Crumbs, and the Darrell Williams. What do you think Darrell Williams think about playing the Cincinnati Bengals right now, leaving school a year early? Well, I'm sure he's really happy with the uh, financial with the situation, money, yeah. but he probably... Uh, 
played on a better defense here with the Miami Hurricanes than what he's on right now with the Bengals. Tech kicking it deep, Jonathan Harris fielding it. And he's out across the 35-yard line with a flag down and 144 remaining. And number 14, Brian Reed. And it's a penalty against Miami. And is that going to be, is that the 16th penalty today for Miami? 17. So they beat last week. 16 last week, 17 today. Holding on the return team. 10-yard penalty. First down. And it doesn't have any impact on where they stand in the football game. That, that's the amazing thing. You take any other team in the country for the most part, and if you tell me they're going to have 17 penalties for over 100 yards, that, that that would put their chances of winning in jeopardy, not the Miami Hurricane. Now here's Ryan Collins. Danielle Ferguson is brought down. Brian Collins, the third Miami quarterback today. The first one, the man, Gino Toretta, who will stay undefeated as the Miami starting quarterback. 19 straight, and he is our infinity player of the game. Three touchdown passes today, 249 yards. And a 40-3 game while Toretta was on. Smart quarterback, already got the shoulder pads off. We're seeing three quarterbacks. Miami has a fourth quarterback that's not traveling with the team this year. A redshirt freshman, and you talk about planning, they've already got the, the blueprint set. If you want to follow the ideal world, Frank Costa quarterbacks them in 93 and 94, and then in 95, their quarterback may well be Chris Walsh, the younger brother of Steve Walsh. Chris Walsh from St. Paul, Minnesota, high school All-American quarterback last year, and he is redshirting this year at Miami. Of course, Ryan Collins will like to think he's got something to say about that. But that's, again, the success of the program to build that way. You never get caught with a hole. You've always got somebody in the stable years ahead. And the competition factor just usually makes every other player just play to their best and it really uh, causes them to rise to the next level because there's so much competition at every position and that's what Miami has particularly in their skill areas so that is going to do it here in Blacksburg Virginia the 40th win for Miami in 43 games under Dennis Erickson their 25th consecutive victory overall and as they senior class here at Miami strives to become uh, the best senior class ever. They can do that if they win their third national championship in four years. You take another step in that direction today to go 7-0. and And even though the final score looks that way, the first three quarters of this game were the real story. A, a complete dominance by Miami. Well, you saw the difference between a, a pretty good football team in Virginia Tech, a team that's going to win their share of games, and a great football team in the Miami Hurricanes. Well, that wraps it up here in Blacksburg, Virginia with Todd Blackledge. I'm Ted Robinson. Once again, our final score, Miami 43, Virginia Tech 23. Next week, we'll be in Syracuse at 12 noon for Pitt.